Anyong, we would like to encourage our participants and viewers who are watching via YouTube Live to post your questions in the comment section after the session. Good morning, everyone. To our Chancellor, Dr. Sukarno D. Tangol, our Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension, Dr. Jinky Bornales, our Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Dr. Franco G. Tevez, our Dean of the College of Education, Dr. Amelia T. Buwan, our chairpersons from the different departments of the College of Education, our participants who are our Tibet teachers, TBL or TLE teachers, and our dear students, good morning and welcome to our webinar series session four with the theme, Technical Vocational Education in an Innovative and Flexible Modality, hosted by the Department of Technology Teacher Education of the College of Education, MSU IIT. Our session four entitled, Competency-Based Instruction in Remote Teaching and Learning, which will be explained by our very competent speaker who will be introduced later. So to for formally start this webinar series, we will have our opening prayer and the singing of the Philippine National Anthem through a video presentation. Ang di 
mga kababayan ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Once again, we would like to encourage our participants and viewers via YouTube Live to post your questions in the comment section after the session so that the quest your questions will be answered by our speaker. So today we are graced with a very powerful speaker. To get to know him more, let us welcome our new member of the faculty force of the Department of Technology Teacher Education, Dr. Roque Riqueno. Let us welcome him with a sound virtual applause. Right. Uh, Naimbag na bigat kada kayo amin in San Fernando City, La Union. Um, good morning, participants, our cloud uh, participants. Um, those who are present here in our um, studio, considered a studio. Good morning. So our guest speaker um, has uh, three siblings, all are all professionals and have their uh, job in their respective profession. Obtained career ser service professional in government eligibility. Obtained doctor of education Educational Management and Supervision in 2004 at Lyceum Northwestern University. Obtained Doctor of Philosophy in Development Administration. Complete, completed academic requirements at Demsu Mid La Union Campus. Obtained his Master in Public Administration in St. Louis College at San Fernando City in La Union. Uh, way back 19. 1998 uh, with his work experience positions he was the dean at Demso College of Graduate Studies uh, February 20 from June 2010 to August 2014 and recently the dean from February up to present. He was then the chancellor of the Demsu Mid La Union campus from August 2014 to January 2019. Head publications unit at Demsu Mid La Union campus from 1999 to 2010. OIC Dean of the College of Engineering at Demso Mid La Union Campus from June to October of 2018. A full professor, uh, May 1986 at to present. With regards to the awards, our guest speaker of, is an awardee of the University Faculty of the Year at Demso in 2010 an outstanding campus paper advisor in the Philippines in 1998. With regards to the trainings, 
um, he was trained at CEDAP in Philippine Higher Education Career System Executive Development Program in 2016 to 2017. Flagship course on Academic Excellence Executive Development Program for State Universities and Colleges, Batch 1, at CEDAP in 2013 and 2014. Researches, coding local ordinances of selected barangays in the city of San Fernando, Ubiquitous governance tool, completed February 2020 of this year. You wish means University Wireless Integrated Services Hub, presented during the Europa 2018 in Bali, Indonesia. Transfer Tax Estate, Key Issues and Challenges, presented during the Europa in 2017 in Seoul, South Korea. Devolution as Framework in the Health Service, service Delivery, presented during the Europa of 2014 in Hanoi, Vietnam. Jobs, Poverty and Economic Growth, the case of Region 1 in the Philippines presented again during the Europa in 2013 at Jakarta, Indonesia, Indonesia. Poverty analysis in the Ilocos region, presented during the Europa 2012 in Bangkok, Thailand. His notable accomplishments as Dean of the College of Graduate Studies, implemented the online admission and enrollment system, implemented the program delivery in technology-enabled instruction, implemented the internationalization of programs at the College of Graduate Studies, currently designing the online, online transaction system of the College of Graduate Studies, level four accreditation of technology education programs. Ladies and gentlemen, our honorable guest speaker for today's webinar, please may welcome Dr. Paulito C. Nisperos. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Requino, for the very uh, accommodating in, uh, introduction of, of me. It's actually a pleasure also to be speaking uh, in your webinar and penetrating, of course, uh, Mindanao. Um, I haven't been, I, I, I was in Mindanao before, actually in 1998, when I received my award uh, given by the Department of Education as the Outstanding School Paper Advisor in Tangob City. I believe that's in Mindanao. So I had the opportunity also to visit Mindanao in Davao particular, supposed to be in last uh, February. However, because of uh, the health restriction, although there were no, um, there were no quarantine yet, but there were, um, already uh, some precautions, right? Uh, that's why we canceled our trip. I was supposed to, we were supposed to um, join the focus group discussion of my advice, Ms. Edita Hebron in Davao, but we weren't able to do so. And I am, I am actually very happy, right? To, to be speaking with the Mindanaoans this time, even virtually, uh, joining you in this particular webinar series of yours. Um, let me uh, let me um, greet first and um, make a salutation to the organizing committee of this activity. Uh, thank you very much for the kind invitation. I'd like also to uh, greet our your uh, chancellor for the Mindanao State University Ilagan Institute of Technology. Dr. Uh, Sukarno uh, Tangol, the Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, uh, Dr. Franco Tevez, as well as to the Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension, Dr. Jinky Bornales. I had the pleasure to uh, talking on uh, talking on the, over the phone to Dr. Amelia Buon, the Dean of the College of Education. Uh, he graciously uh, gave in to my request of moving my uh, talk with you supposed to be last 19. I would admit I really accepted that one, although I know the schedule in the university that we are undergoing the ISO uh, certification. I thought that the last day 
will just be called uh, called for uh, the closing program. I didn't know that uh, we will be scheduled, the College of Graduate Studies and the rest of the mid campus will be scheduled for uh, a particular interview. But uh, I don't know if you underwent uh, the ISO certification already, uh, but to us, Oh, we have to wait. Uh, we, you, we are not given a. We are not given the the cue whether we are going to be called or not. But we really have to wait. So I'm uh, thinking because the the Mid Union Campus Graduate Studies is the process owner of the different processes uh, in the uh, in the University for Graduate Programs. I was thinking that we will be called. So, Dr. Buwan, thank you very much for you know accommodating my request to book my uh, talk with you today. It's supposed to be last. Uh, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, 19. I'd like also to acknowledge my good friend, I would say, uh, Dr. Rocky Rikino, uh, who introduced me a while back. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Actually, you introduced me to Mindanao State University, IIT, for this particular issue. Uh, I would be very glad to uh, discuss with you some points on uh, the competency-based or CBL, right? Uh, competency-based learning or education as well as that of the remote teaching and learning. And then I'll be sharing with you our experiences uh, in the College of Graduate Studies. I may be uh, very limited to that one because uh, um, though we have a program technology education, like what Dr. Rocket took with us. And so with, I believe one of your faculty also, Mr. Alan Vergara, who I interviewed online last time during the enrollment, uh, probably, but my, as I've said, my association with all the activities there is just being an administrator of the college, but my specialization is in development administration because that is actually where I, uh, my program. Although once in a while, I invited to teach also in the technology education, in particular uh, philosophy subjects like what Dr. Rikino took on organization and management. And that's the only thing I guess that I am uh, really uh, leading too much in the technology education programs. But administering the whole college is actually a pleasure and my pleasure also to share with you our experiences. Uh, in cases also that um, I would like to, uh, I'd, I'd like to inform everyone that the concept that I'll be presenting is not actually totally my own uh, because it's so difficult to, difficult to coin words. So you have to get it from the source from sources, okay? But from the experiences of the university, uh, then definitely that is uh, ours, right? Although probably the, the terminologies that we'll be using there also will be you know, uh, taken from the internet or taken from other sources. Because uh, ganun naman talaga, di po ba? Uh, ang hirap po kasi mag-coin ng word. Until you get something from the from the, the latest craze or the latest uh, fad in education, and then we localize it, and then we adopt it, and then we implement uh, sometimes you know, there, are, there are successes in the implementation and adapt, adapting the programs or program, projects, right? But there are also some failures. Um, hopefully, right, that uh, although I'll be sharing both the failures of the graduate school as well as the successes of the graduate school, um, hopefully that uh, you do share also the experiences. I would like to invite everyone for uh, in, if you have some comments or even not just to question me or to ask question, but probably would like to share your experiences also similar to ours. And that would be uh, a good welcome to, uh, to, to my talk, to make it, uh, to make it more uh, lively as well as more interactive, okay? Allow me to, uh, let's, shall I start, Dr. Rokino? <laughs> Allow me to share my uh, presentation, right, for, to easier to, to, for manageability. My, my talk this morning would come in three parts. Then I will discuss first the competency-based uh, instruction, the probably the principles behind it. Um, and then I will discuss also the remote teaching and learning. Uh, although basic alam nyo na po ito, right? Uh, alam po na po na ginagawa nyo ngayon ito. Uh, kasi nga nasa, nasa home teaching tayo lahat. So naka-remote po tayo lahat. Pero iba-iba lang po siguro tayo or... We have different uh, different uh, appreciation of the remote uh, teaching, as well as um, different uh, uh, kinds of implementation, probably if you call it that way, right? So, siguro we just blend together later. 
ano yung experiences niyo and what are experiences at the Bilayan campus in particular yun, in the area of Luzon. Right? Natutuwa po ako, nasa Mindanao po ako virtually. <laughs> Kaya, uh, really, I um, actually invited my my colleagues at the graduate school to you know to, to support me also in this uh, in this talk i know they're watching over to youtube uh hopefully that uh, they would affirm what i'm going to to say later uh and then i will i will uh, I'll probably uh dig some more later on the experiences of the midline campus allow me to share my screen please Okay, I hope my my uh, screen sharing is already okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Um, the topic given to me by Dr. Buan is on the competency-based instruction in remote uh, teaching and learning. Usually, you see the classroom these days like this, right? Uh, we always have two questions. The very um, the essential question that we ask ourselves, that is, how do we best support student learning when our long-standing ideas about when, where, as well as how learning happens no longer apply. The second essential question probably we ask ourselves is, how might we continue to prioritize mastery and personalization when we are physically separated, relying only on technology to communicate? This actually question, uh, um, during the start of the lockdown, uh, being a school administrator, a college administrator rather, and uh, education practitioner. I was actually, uh, I actually pondered on this one. How do we really uh, get to continue our program in the graduate school? Um, by the way, allow me to, most of my examples definitely will be in the graduate school uh, um, because this is actually where I work now. And most of the, the thing that, uh, that is in competency-based and uh, remote teaching and learning is actually confined in where I'm stationed. Um, in the graduate school, we only meet 18 Saturdays or 18 meetings for 54 hours. Exactly during the lockdown in, in Luzon, we consumed nine meetings. So therefore, how are we going to continue the nine more meetings? That's actually the question we really had in, uh, in mind. In, for a while, we um, we did not do anything, actually, to be honest with you. Uh, we were observing what we would be doing or what the government would be telling us. Uh, telling us. But, uh, you know, we cannot just um, cut the semester from there because when the Department of Education and even the, higher, the Commission on Higher Education were telling us to continue, right, with flexibility, um, but ours is different, ours is different, um, but we are still mandated by the uh, Commission on Higher Education through, uh, through the university uh, administration that we continue still, right, by any modalities. That's why we did continue, although mamaya pag isi-share po sa inyo, siguro na matatawa kayo kung paano kami, paano namin tinawid yung uh, siyam, na, siyam na natitirang araw sa graduate school. Okay. Um, schools and universities are now scrambling to enable digital and technical infrastructures that will uh, support whatever form of virtual learning that they will be most likely to adopt. Right now, online learning has been pushed further and deeper as a solution that addresses the challenges of learning continuity amid school closure at this time of pandemic. Um, Usually, video conferencing is uh, the one that we adopted, okay? uh, which is actually to replicate the face-to-face -face instruction that actually made Zoom a household name already. Uh, yeah, I requested also for Zoom because uh, oh, I'm more familiar with this one than the, the other. Um, access and usage to video conferencing tools as well as the learning management systems have spiked tremendously. Um, as teaching and learning continue within the virtual corners of the online classrooms. Online learning has been a great means towards a continuous learning, and some schools have done it successfully, and while some face major concerns. 
not all schools were successful in this one. Hopefully yours and ours no, was able to make an average uh, success story for this one. Online learning has been a great means to continue learning during the lockdown because of the health risks that we have. Therefore, um, we resorted all to this one. The, uh, the, the, the Google Meet, the Google uh, Classroom, the Zoom, all these things became so familiar with us, including the Microsoft Teams and all the Walana in Skype, but the, during the time that we were doing the uh, competency based in the graduate studies, we were using it. We were using actually Skype now, as part of our as part of our uh, methodology, you know, to deliver or a uh, pedagogy rather to deliver our lessons. Now, let us discuss first competency based education. Competency based education is a system that reimagines time as well as space assessment, even and other core elements of education to ensure all students develop the skills they need to succeed in school as well as in beyond. Um, what might happen, right? Um, we give this particular task to our student, not actually on their own pace, because we always uh, confine them still with uh, the rigors of, uh, say, for example, the semester, right? That they have to master, that they have to master uh, their uh, competencies, the lessons that they have, and then later on, uh, check and assess their uh, mastery. And from there, we award, of course, uh, grades as well as graduation if successful, okay? The competency-based education um, allows students, right, to advance based on their ability to master, for example, their skills uh, that we forward them, or competency in their own, regardless of the uh, environment that they are in, whether they are uh, particularly they are at home, right, or in their workplaces. This method is tailored to meet different learning abilities and can lead to more efficient student outcomes. There are several uh, there are several uh, myths, right, that uh, were conceived by many, right, thinking that competency base is like this, a uh, competency base is difficult, competency base is not for student. Competency based is actually difficult for teachers, but uh, we have to consider those things as part of the uh, part of the development process of why this particular competency base is a welcome treat, particularly at this time of the pandemic, particularly at this time then when our students are at home, particularly at this time when teachers uh, could not actually physically meet the students or in classes. Okay, let us discuss one by one the meet. The first one is, great. The first one is competency-based learning is self-paced. This is actually wrong. This is not true, okay? Uh, CBL is a personalized to the individual student, but that does not mean student are actually left alone, okay? Um, CBL asks schools to use their articulated competencies in learning outcomes to ensure time is allocated in a way that support mastery. We always give allowances to our students to master, but we always give time. It's not about, it's not just about giving this particular uh, lesson or topic for them to master in their own time, but we always give them also a timeline to master it. But in cases, uh, in cases that, uh, say for example, during the time of assessment, uh, students cannot still, right? So for example, there's still uh, a bit of bothersome in the, in the performance of their uh, task, then we can still allow some more, okay? So it's not actually self-paced, but it's actually they give on their own, okay? The second myth is it, uh, it, content, uh, content doesn't matter in competency-based learning. Sorry, <laughs> um, focusing on skills does not mean forgetting about content. Definitely, as a teacher, right, you articulate it, you have to make it appealing, you have to make it challenging, you have to make it uh, uh, something like enticing, right, for, for students to really learn. It's uh, unlike in the classroom, uh, we motivate our students. It's a part of our lesson plan, right, is to motivate them first, to give the, to give the vibe of learning, uh, to introduce the lesson. But this time, right, since we will be delivering the, say, for example, the uh, 
instructional material or learning material to them or module you call it material, however you call it and it's up to them to really uh, motivate themselves right so therefore uh, the content should also be um, discussed well the content should be thought about thought about okay before we deliver these things the second one the third one rather is Competency-based learning is less rigorous than traditional education. That is what we thought, okay? Uh, thinking kasi na, ibibigyan na lang natin yung trabaho sa isang estudyante, right? Bahala na po siya. No, it's not, uh, so, skala natin na mas mahirap yung nagtuturo ka sa classroom. But definitely, siguro ganun din po yung mga teachers na kas, naging uh, the same experience that we had at the Midlayan Campus that when we shifted to online and when we shifted to, you know, this kind of assessments, it is actually more difficult than the face-to-face -face classes. Actually, up, even up to this time, we still struggle. We still have, we still meet some problems. We still meet probably, uh, I'm not saying half of the expectation of our student, but definitely there are still, you know, uh, we have not perfected it. That's why it's actually more rigorous, right? You have to design your lesson. You know, that you're going to give so that you would be able to motivate them, you know, motivate your students, even just by reading your material so that you could do their own mastery, they could do their own skill, they could actually uh, uh, demonstrate a skill based on the learning material that you have given them. So that in the end, in the assessment, uh, you determine mo kung, kung okay yung binigay mo. Okay? Pero honestly, napakahirap po ng online learning. Napakahirap po ng ganito po. Uh, I, I know you. I, I you share with me the, the the experiences of this. You have also competency-based learning is a restrictive mode of learning. Okay, um, it's not. It's, it's not actually for Sibyl's emphasis in a pre-articulated competencies. Learning outcomes and rubrics might seem restrictive and limiting student to creativity and educators' autonomy. However, the emphasis of the CBL is on skills rather than on the content. Okay. Although I, said, I mentioned a while back that, that content matters, right? That is actually when you design your learning material or instruction material or your module to be given to the student. However, the outcome of this one is more on the skills okay, of the, the, the student receiving the module. Um, competencies and learning outcomes offer clear parameters but leave room for educators and students to interpret what work might be done to meet these particular targets. Uh, the graphical error. Um, as I've said earlier, it's actually, um, it's not actually restricting them. It uh, even allows them to a lot of uh, opportunities, a lot of uh, other things to do, right? So they can design their own, uh, they can design their own uh, activity, no? Based on the one you have instructed them to what to do. And they can have a lot of resources, no? Although probably at this time, the, they are more confined to the internet, no? uh, downloading, browsing, and uh, getting some, some, you know, uh, some other information related to what you have given them or what we are giving them. Uh, and from there, they're able to conceptualize things and they're able to master some skills. They're able to do uh, some more. And then another, therefore, competency-based education is a system that focuses on the mastery skills no? that actually shapes assessment. Okay. Competency-based learning refers to system of instruction to conclude this one, right? It's more of the skills that matters to the, to the in particular when assessment time comes, when we, call, when we call for our student to, you know, online parent, right? When you call for them to assess them, uh, how well they're doing. Um, if, for example, they, have, they, they get better, right? Then, like I said, then we grade them from there. If not, then probably we get some more allowances. It's actually we become more flexible in, the, in this manner. It could not be more uh, confined to just what we're doing in the classroom. Although inside the classroom, it's although yung bagong sinasabi ng Commission on Higher Education several years ago, right? Na sinabi nila dapat yung ano natin is outcomes based na right? Yung mga instruction delivery natin outcomes based, lahat lahat no. Pero um, traditional teachers would always teach students based on lessons based on the using the board and the the the, the, the board marker uh, using their using their laptops and presented there karamihan ganun pa rin ginagawa po natin eh. um, although we always end up no assessing na dapat may outcome yung lessons natin but in here no talagang we assess the mastery of these students right in the outcomes uh, uh, in the outcomes context okay 
So that's actually uh, competency-based or CPL. Now, we talk on the remote teaching and learning. Basically, ito ginagawa na po ninyo lahat. Eh. Ginagawa na po natin lahat. Uh, hindi na po sa atin bago. When, since we started the... Uh, since we started working from home, we're in a quarantine po tayo. Um, the only thing that we did was to wait for the government to give us instruction to go back in the classroom, but we, we, we did not, right? So therefore, what happened to us is we have to redesign our uh, system so that we can use online. But there are several issues with online learning particular siguro sa basic education or particular also sa inyo din sa, sa baccalaureate degree, sa undergraduate. But uh, uh, in the graduate level, um, we assume na uh, all our students have the capability uh, to do that. Although, uh, not setting, the, uh, setting aside the fact that there are still other students na hindi naman po nabilingin sa amin, right? Na hindi uh, kaya Secondly, even if they have access to the internet, uh, the signal might be very uh, slow or technical for the matter. So to, to, to join online learnings, okay? Now, remote teaching occurs outside the physical classroom. Instructors are separated from the learners in time and as well as distance. And remote teaching is typically facilitated through technology, such as video conferencing, uh, discussion boards or learning management system or LMS. Ito po, importante, importante po sa atin. No? We must have a LMS no? in delivering our lessons. Um, I do not know kung meron, alam ko na malaking school po kayo, you know, you're a big university, uh, definitely you're able to uh, manage already having an, your own LMS, right? Um, siguro later na lang ko, but I'd like also to learn listen to your stories on how you, you know, uh, manage to uh, manage this particular uh, issues uh, in this particular situation. This type of teaching may be synchronous, like for example, when you require your students to be online, just like what we're doing now, or asynchronous where you just upload your lessons, you upload, the, uh, upload reading materials, and then at any given time or point, students will uh, read and learn from, from those instruction materials. Now, there are some issues definitely I mentioned earlier, right? Um, you have to know your students' technological capabilities and what support is available to them. Um, sabi po nila, hindi ko lahat ng, hindi ko lahat ng mga estudyante. You know, not all our students are capable, or have the capability rather of, uh, um, you know, having a connection, that's one. This is the, the, the first issue actually, right? Um, a second one, uh, do they have the gadget or do they have the, the equipment to facilitate this uh, online learning? So therefore, uh, remote teaching may not only be confined to online. Um, dito sa university ko namin, particularly the baccalaureate, no? uh, we are using the modules just like what the Department of Education is doing. Okay, We are doing the same also. But uh, we encourage our, our professors to um, conduct online classes once in a while uh, to check, okay? Because it's it's not it's so difficult naman talaga na mahirap pong i-assess na talaga ibigay mo lang yung module and then uh, you designate a time to uh, get the the modules back, right? And then uh, hindi mo alam kung hindi mo alam kung sinagot na niya yun o pinasagot sa iba or ever, right? So um, better check also the, the capabilities of our students you know, if they are if they have this if they have connections if they have uh, if they have uh, this equipment now for online learning just like when, but just like here now this is a slide that pinapakita ko sa inyo ngayon our students are just listening from the cellular phone you know? um, quite honestly um, we discourage it now in the graduate school na our students when we go live uh, with our lessons we discourage our students from um, you know, using the cellular phone. We always uh, encourage them to use the laptop, their laptops or their, their desktops, right? To interact with us and join us. No? Although um, we're not actually restricting what we discourage it as much as possible. Because there are distractions kasi pag, uh, cellular phone. Lang. But we do understand that um, 
may mga limitations nga po sila, my, my students natin, okay? Um, in particular, uh, if our student can come to school, then they have to use all these things, right? Uh, but we have to check also with our school's uh, policies on, uh, on tawag, I forget the, I forget the term, the online policies, if, if you have those things. Because particularly when you upload your lessons, right? Um, pumapasa po ba sa quality control? Pumapasa po ba sa, sa mga checking, uh, validating uh, of these learning materials? I believe most schools that at this time, right, uh, probably uh, veered away from that one because of the urgency of the situation. So, nakag nakagawa ng modules, uh, ibigay ka agad. Pero, uh, as I've said, right, um, if we really have to, you know, embrace online learning, in particular at this time, because even by next year, right, 2021, uh, we were already informed that uh, online pa rin yung, online pa rin yung modality natin. Uh, therefore, uh, sana makagawa na ng no, mga universities or colleges or institutions of learning of a system that checks these things. Okay, para, kasi if you go to go to the newspaper, right, marami kang maririnig doon. The second one is designate an online learning hub. Uh, marami naman sa, marami naman sa, uh, ano, sa, na free app dyan. Eh. Like, for example, the Google Classroom, ba, gam, gam, gamit na gamit po yan noong uh, start ng pandemic, start ng lockdown. So, siguro halos lahat ng professors, halos ng teachers, make use of the uh, Google Classroom. Uh, it's actually, it's a learning uh, management, uh, learning management system that, uh, you know, it could, it could uh, help teachers as well as students, no, get by, no, in this particular time when you can just upload your lessons and then learn from there. And then once in a while, you can go for, uh, Ano na yun? Uh, Google Meet, right? Uh, to check on our students. Nakakatawa nga sa, sa graduate school. Nung una, uh, we don't know what to do really. Uh, although, uh, one of our professors introduced to us the Google Classroom. So we did go to Google Classroom. But most often than that, most of our professors were using the Messenger. Even myself, I use the Messenger. Even up to now, actually, uh, we use the Messenger no? as uh, communication means. No, I mean, Doon ko, si, ko sinesend yung, kung, yung information, the uh, other the vital uh, information that they need to, uh, you know, to, to know. Although we are using an LMS in the uh, LMS for our university, particularly the graduate school, uh, the two graduate school in the university, the, uh, pareho kami na ginagamit na LMS, which I will be discussing later also. Um, but sabi ko nga, karamihan na ginawa namin nun is nakakatawa lang, right? Na, hindi naman, I'm not saying na pinaglaroan namin yung mga estudyante namin doon. Uh, because we were caught, uh, you know, uh, by surprise with the closure of schools. And we don't have any plans at that time. Um, we were fearing for our health because uh, we were locked down in the homes, right? Um, then definitely our students feel the same. Then, you know, uh, unti unti we get by. So we made use of the SMS, this is a short uh, messaging system, through the cellular phone, kung tino kung gusto And then, uh, sa, na, natutuho kami sa yung video conferencing using the uh, messenger. Pero yung messenger kasi anim lang yata, wala lang yung pwedeng makijoin, right? Until uh, we get back to the, our, we get back to our, you know, uh, usual activities, pero in the, a new dimension using the cellular phone and then our laptop. Then pumasok nga ho yung Google Classroom na introduce, introduce ko na isang professor ko namin sa graduate school. And then uh, for a while, we, uh, we used that one. Pero I, I, being the dean of the college, I did not actually prescribe that one. So I gave the freedom still to our professors to decide what kind of uh, remote teaching they would be, uh, what type of remote teaching rather they, they would employ for their classes to continue the nine more meetings that they had left for the graduate school. Um, and so we were able to do, uh, do those things. As I've said, pinatulan po namin yung uh, messenger ng Facebook. Uh, Doon kami nagka-class eh. Para bang, uh, to be honest with you, nung una din, magpo-post ako ng question then my students will answer. Parang ganun. Parang, pero at the end of the day, iniisip ko, tama pa yung ginagawa namin. So parang mali. Talagang mali. Right? So we have to redesign it in such a way na 
uh, we formalize education online. So which I will be sharing with you later when we go to the university experience. Another one is to have you have to communicate often, clearly and consistently as much as possible. Kumustahin yun sila, especially when you send an activity, right? When you give an activity, kumustahin um, yun sila. Um, if they get by, no, kung nagagawa nila, you can always give them assistance. Um, I'm not so sure with, uh, uh, although I listen to some stories of our professors in technology education programs na nagbibidyo po sila and then uh, ina-upload sa YouTube din, and then their students would watch, okay? And then an assessment later, a practice and assessment later comes, okay? But we in the graduate, in the, in the uh, development administration, um, hindi masyado kasi kami sa, ano eh, sa, sa scale. It's more analytical. So we give them some researches. Um, pero we confine them to online researches. Uh, we confine them to the net presence researches. They have to collaborate with the LGUs uh, via online. And then using the focus group discussion online, they, they, can, uh, they can do their thing also. So I always ask them almost every day, kumusta? How are you doing? How's your assignment given to you? How... Anything that would actually just lift them up. Because if we are hard up with our situation, how much probably more to them? Uh, I will speak on the on my age level, right? Because I'm you know, I'm out of the right? So when I'm confined in the house, it was okay, no? I mean, uh, there's the kitchen, there's the refrigerator, it's just okay. And then maybe we give them some barangay kapitan na we na masardinas, so it was okay, really, right? So we're getting by. And then, however, kung eto mga youth, yung mga estudyante natin, na nasana sa freedom outside, no, outside of that, outside of the house, of the homes, outside of the classroom also, then they get with a lot of their peers and their friends. So how are they getting by being locked down, uh, being locked down, and then giving them assignments more, right? So para mag-iiba yung mag-iiba yung landscape nila. So better na kamustahin mo natin si sila. Um uh, nahihirapan mo sila. They probably can extend a bit of help, okay? And for all public and you know, conference with parents. Uh, one of the one of the literature I read on this one is teachers also must con- have a conference with parents. Uh, but I did not include it here anymore kasi nga as I've said, uh, ang confinement kasi ng ng experiences ko is in graduate school and we don't involve the parents anymore in the graduate school. Uh, it, it's more professional, right? In our dealings with them, uh, it's individual, uh, individual learning. So that's it. So parang ganun lang. And then, if possible, also gather your students for synchronous meetings. Okay. Uh, this one is a screenshot of my class last major term during the last July. Um, you can you can see their faces, right? Uh, as much as possible, we gather them. No, sabi, sabi ko din sa mga, I, I even told this up to our professors in the graduate school. I guess they're doing it also every week that they we, we, we meet our students online. Okay, if not, naman kung if, if there are some reasons for not meeting them on upload our lessons for their asynchronous activities, so they should, the students can just you know um, move on and do their thing in their own. And later on, probably uh, in the assessment time, when they when we get to meet again our students, from there we ask their problems. Maganda nga ho online, right? Uh, as in, nakikita mo yung you know, nakikita mo sila, right? Uh, I mean, uh, synchronous meetings with them. Kaya nakikita mo sila. Uh, there should be a policy in your class, right? If you're doing this one, there should be a policy in your class that when you start your delivering your lectures, uh, you have to open your camera. However, you have to mute your microphones so that you will not be disturbing others no, from, you know, uh, if for unnecessary noise. But, the, you know, it is a must that you open the camera uh, para nakikita kayong professor, nakikita ng classmate, na nakikinig. Kasi one time, during the initial activities namin na ganito, uh, nung wala pa kaming mga uh, in-house policies on online learnings or on, uh, online meetings, uh, we allow our students to, you know, uh, close their cameras. Later on, when you, you know, when you randomly call them, wala naman sumasagot. So, ibig sabihin, baka na wala naman estudyante. Hindi ko ba? So, uh, better that we, uh, you know, require them. Uh, we, have a, we have a, uh, a house policy on, you know, to open the cameras so you can see them. Can, parang classroom pa rin, right? But uh, probably you, you share this experience also that even with this one, uh, kahit na naka-open yung camera, nakikita mo sila kahit online 
it's so different, right? Kasi um, dati gumagawa ako ng slides na mga less than less than 20 lang yung slides ko, mga 15, 16, gano'n. And then I consumed that for three hours in, the, in my lectures in the class. Ngayon gumagawa ako ng more than 50 slides kasi nga walang, walang nakikinteract. Even if you call for them, they may say a little, right? So uh, to, keep, to keep the class going, so you know, uh, you have to really give some more uh, materials no? or some insights, some, some information, some principles that you're going to discuss in class. Nakakatuyo nga ako ng, nakakatuyo nga ako ng lalamutan yung ganitong process. So hindi ko ka. And then also create opportunities for asynchronous connections. Um, even if they are working alone, give them some activities that they can work together. Like you have to group them. Then they figure it out how they're going to connect with each other, right? Even if it's asynchronous, right? Hindi mo sila meet, but they they actually um, uh, interacting with their classmate even by distance. So that's actually a synchronous uh, connection and uh, creating its uh, opportunities. And then when it comes to content, be a curator, not a dumper. Remember this. Um, in psychology, kasi, um, if you give in too much, the mind stops working from working. Uh, hindi ko ba? Um, parang, ako pag binibigyan ako maraming, uh, maraming, maraming gawain, uh, sometimes, you know, parang hindi na mag-work yun. So, um, if you are a teacher like this of dumping a lot of instructional materials, uh, 7 to 10, uh, reading materials in one session, sa tingin mo kasi dahil home-based home, uh, home based sila, so they have the time, hindi ko tama yun. Uh, parang ma, ma, parang mag, magkakaroon ng, uh, maglalag, yung, yung, maglalag yung, yung brain, hindi na gumagana. Ma I don't know if you uh, if you understand my word. Maguumay po sila. Ayon po nilang magpasa, right? So probably one or at most two, right? The reading materials, your lecture, uh, coupled with the reading materials you give them, but not the reading materials that comprises of several pages. Still, you have to really what? It's uh, suggest them also to make it at least five pages for them to read and analyze, and then probably uh, do some assessment later also from there. Okay, so big curator, not a dumper, okay? Um, beware of this one. And then, support uh, student connection. Um, once in a while, you if, say, if you're uh, feeling one student or two students having problem, right? Um, you probably can have a, uh, a video conference, right? And, and know their activities, know their problems, what, what actually, uh, you know, um, slowing them down, um, and then give them, give them some some more motivations probably uh, to continue with it, okay? Uh, to continue with learning. Um, you have to support them actually with, the, with these particular issues. Mahirap din po kasi yung online para sa kanila, para sa atin. So, but uh, being the teacher, then you have the, we, we are supposed to be the first one to find solutions to this particular problem. And then the solution should be given to our students just the same. And then you have also think creatively and strategically about assessment. Um, Pinaplano po, right? It's not just about giving through all false. It's not just about giving uh, multiple choices, right? Uh, it's not just about giving a topic for them to research. Okay. Um, Pinaplano po yun, right? So, like for example, the graduate school, I always emphasize to our professors, right? While you can give them, because it, uh, it's a stick, it's actually a uh, um, stereotype already for graduate schools. Na pag, uh, at the start of the class, you give the syllabus and then you let your teachers, uh, you let your students rather uh, get a topic and then later on they will be assigned for a date to you know process it or to report it. Okay? But I always tell my professors in the graduate school that it should not be the case, right? Uh, at least allow three, four, uh, four or even to the whole the meeting that you be the one to be giving the instructional materials, okay? Not necessary that you uh, that the professor is discussing, but rather uh, giving them some um, a plot challenging activities that they can do on their own, so that in the assessment time you will be able to assess the development, you will be able to assess uh, uh, the mastery of the particular lesson, their skills if it's just, if the le if the course is skill based, okay? If not, the, the cognitive thinking of all those things, na uh, ma assess mo lahat, so. 
in making your assessment, uh, you have to be more creative. Okay. Um, siguro, uh, siguro mas matalino po, mas marami po kang idea kung paano sa iba't ibang klase ng mga assessment. Kasi, as I've said in the program, we are almost actually on the policy implications uh, of policy assessment, uh, policy recommendations, and policy analysis. No? So, karamihan lang ganun. Although, most often than not, nilalagyan namin ng a bit of spice, right? In particular, using the current events to, to just, uh, tickle a bit of the imagination of our students and for them to think creatively. Uh, in, in that sense, in that way, uh, they could come up with a good uh, of policy recommendations or policy alternatives. And then you have also be intentional and explicit about timing and pacing. Uh, when you speak of explicit about timing, um, check also your hours when you call for this one. But I believe it, 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 uh, hindi natin nagiging problema sa atin to sa mga universities, right? Because our classes are uh, designated with time. Um, I'm not sure of this one. The, in our universities, since we, we give them uh, in the undergraduate, since we give them the modules, um, I, I don't know if may schedule din sila for the online, okay? But definitely in the graduate school, uh, in our case, we designate our professors online and we do not allow them to go beyond that one because, uh, uh, you know, baka masaku pa niya yung oras, right, my teachers. And then in, in case also, right, in case also we allow our professors to uh, encourage them to give uh, asynchronous activities, right, or so that they can, our students can uh, multitask, right? While listening probably to the professor, they're doing another assignment in their uh, another course. Okay, parang ganun po. So you have to be very intentional in this one. And then uh, you have to uh, you have to ask the student feedback. Let me go go previews. Okay. Um, nakalimutan ko highlight yung text para maintain makita, right? Uh, but ask the student for feedback. There are a lot. Okay. Recently, I asked our MIS college uh, MIS facilitator to. Uh, design the online uh, online assessment for professors. It is important that we get feedback. Kung baka kasi po na uh, hindi na po tayo naiintindihan mga estudyante natin, uh, sayang lang po. Okay? And then, create uh, opportunities for personalization um, as much as possible, right? Uh, even even during the classes. Uh, I'm not saying you have to inject humor, right? <laughs> kasi pangit naman yung sa klase, right? But at least the, the classes should be light, right? Uh, the classes should be uh, enjoyable, right? In, in, in particularly, this is stressful time. So uh, do some personalization on the, uh, create some opportunities for it, right? In, in, in your, in the uh, delivery of your classes, okay? Um, and then recognize the importance of student support. I guess I mentioned this a while back, but it's just repeated, no? There are some students who are uh, probably having some problems, uh, meeting some, uh, some, you know, uh, online problems, personal problems, or even um, a lot of problems, right? That uh, bothers them. That actually uh, uh, think about psychology of not making them fully uh, engrossed with the lessons, fully engrossed with the system, the new system of the living lessons. So, uh, I check on this one also. And then reflect on your role as a teacher in the virtual spaces. Okay. Um, you always you always think um, what if no? you always uh, imagine uh, you're doing something. You're using uh, you face your classes as if uh, as if they are there with you, right? Even if you're just meeting them online. Okay. Um, hindi naman huli sa atin lahat. We all attended webinars already, right? So being a participant is the same as that of a student. The only uh, the only added feature there is the students are absorbing some some lessons, okay. Although while we do also uh, uh, get insights during attending attending webinars, right? But think about it, okay. Think about it. Um, parang as a teacher, you should have a vision for that one. Kung ano yung tama or, or what is best suited for them, uh, what material uh, what material you're going to give them. And then connect with your colleagues and share strategies that work, okay? Once in a while, uh, the dean or the chairperson probably have to um, uh, call for some meetings, right? And then share your strategies. Um, 
dito kami kumukuha ng mga even in the graduate school no uh, informal talks during lunch uh, yeah, I admit, nagla-lunch na rin po kami sabay-sabay, pero we, we, use, it, we use our own tables. <laughs> Although, uh, yun nga, sa recent ISO uh, certification namin, assessment namin, ginagbawal po kami na kumain sa table. So, pero, uh, during the time, hindi pa po, na nag-prepare pa po kami ng ISO namin, uh, we talk about it. No? We, we talk about the strategy of one. And then, in case na natutunan, in case it's okay, it's good, uh, and that the feedback of students are good, and we adapt it also. So, so that a lot of strategies may be different strategies from different uh, thinkers. Okay? So, pwede yung i-adam. So, deans, right? Share persons may call for meetings on this one and then share experiences. Uh, most often than not, kasi pag nag-meeting tayo, it's more about work. Right? Although, work pa rin to pag-uusapan na ganito, pero um, it's a welcome breather, right? Um, hindi masyado matigat, right? Kasi you just talk about your experiences, how you deliver your lessons, and then from there, uh, the other professors, other teachers would get some some insights and probably they can adapt. Another one is uh, here or now, rather, uh, apologies for that. Here's our experience in the university. I hope you uh, get some information. Well, I know, baka kung more advanced po pa po kayo sa Mindanao State University, uh, siguro from kung mas advanced po kayo kaysa sa amin, then, then siguro ako at saka yung mga kasama ko sa graduate school, I know, I know they're watching in YouTube, na makikinig din po sa inyo. Probably, we can get also your stories, we can get also your experiences, and you can, you can probably share with us now also. But let me share our experience in the graduate school. Now, where are we going? Sometime in 2010, our goal is to internationalize our programs. In 2010, kasi that was my first time to be assigned as the dean of the graduate school. So, looking looking at the prospect of administering a college, I wanted uh, to internationalize our programs. From there, we were able to get partners from uh, Thailand, uh, in particular, the uh, Ministry of Education in Thailand, the, uh, and then another person, um, uh, Dr. Um, Orasak, I guess it, yes, that day, that's the name, Dr. Orasak, who owns the school, Chunburi uh, Business School, uh, we were able to establish uh, our internationalization program. Uh, we customized the, the PhD in development administration from there. Okay, and then uh, to date, we were able to graduate. If I say that, that we were able to graduate uh, eighteen international students. All of them are all Thai. Okay, because now na na naging naging Thai ako namin. As I've said, this was our trust before. For two years, we've been pursuing this trust until such time we realized that while we give education, while we extend education to other nationalities, right, we forgot our Filipino, our Filipinos who are working abroad. So here comes the technology-enabled instruction. I guess Dr. Requino was telling you about this already, right? I'll probably have shared a story about this already. Um, we were able to get, uh, we were granted by the board, uh, by the board to offer technology enabled instruction. Um, however, it was confined to overseas Filipino workers, no? Uh, kasi pag international students or foreign uh, students, we put them into the internationalization. The experiences po namin sa internationalization, it's either, uh, since we customize the curriculum, right, for them, uh, not actually the, the curriculum itself, right, the content, right, and then we deliver, it, we deliver it to them, they come to the Philippines for a period of time, or once in a while, the professor is sent to Thailand and for a period of time also and deliver the lesson. And before we, could, we conclude that thing as a semester, there will be an assessment just the same from para sa kanila, right? And from there, uh, grades or units are earned. Now, while do, pursuing internationalization, I've said earlier, uh, we thought of our co-Filipinos working abroad that probably they, they might be needing it also. So if we, are, we were able to internationalize development administration as a program there, why not technology-enabled instruction for Filipino work, or fellow Filipino workers you know, working abroad? So ito yung uh, sinasabi po namin, technology-enabled instruction. We offer the first uh, development administration. However, um, there, weren't take, there were no takers for that one. Mas marami kasi mga nag-a-abroad. 
na Pilipino na giging na teachers ko sila doon. So ang naging program naging main program ko nito is the science education as well as the technology education. So nakaka-graduate po kami ng uh, date may lima na po kami na pag-graduate na technology type instruction. One is about to graduate this sem and uh, five more are on this particular mode. But uh, earlier I said we remove that technology enabled instruction to them at this time because all of all our regular students are online so we fuse them already now what is our practice in the technology enabled instruction earlier no we email the uh, we email the lessons hindi pa po kami nagme-messenger noon if i'm not mistaken so we use the email right so from there uh, pag assessment time um, we schedule in the skype so they face face din po kami uh, we, we ask them some questions so we we validate their activities no and then later on uh, every year whenever they come home for vacation we tell them na i, i, itapat po nila sa summer so para when they come home they will stay in the graduate school for two weeks for say for example for two semesters that they are uh, uh, being addressed by technology or TEI, right? So, pag, pag, pag uwi po nila sa Philippines, uh, we check, uh, we reinforce uh, the learning uh, um, that we gave them via the email and well as Skype, right? So, every day pumapasok po sila for two weeks and then all teachers assigned have to, you know, assess their, their master their skills on that one. Um, it has become famous, no? Uh, marami po yung TEI po kami kaya na hindi po lahat na graduate. Siguro ito po yung sinasabi ko na uh, mga frustrations din po namin kasi uh, hindi po natatapos ang time. Yung iba, they just, even if they are already in their dissertation writing, they fall behind. Probably because uh, ito rin yung limitation, right? Unlike po kasi kung regular student na uh, doing the research, right? Uh, whenever they come to the office, they can, you know, uh, assist them uh, assist them in, in, in writing their uh, thesis or their dissertations. Uh, but but this thing is different. Okay, so siguro yun yung mga failures din po ng uh, program po namin. Although may mga success stories, as I've said, uh, we graduated already three uh, three science education. Uh, actually, they were absorbed in the, the one was absorbed in the university. The two went back to uh, working uh, uh, in the hospital the other one is going about it. It's the same as a teacher, okay? And then we have also Mr. Brian Arante from Mindanao also, right? I don't know kung kilala po niyo dyan. He recently graduated last, last July. Suppose siya yung kasama sa pandemic uh, graduates po namin. Uh, we're not able to recognize their uh, graduation because of the restrictions for physical distancing. So, uh, yun yung mga success stories po naman ako namin. And then Mr. Aldrin Bangod, who is about to graduate also this semester, we just defended. Who is going to defend? Uh, we just defended rather his dissertation last week. And is going to submit uh, his manuscript by uh, next week. Here comes 2020. Now, uh, uh, we were so stuck with the uh, uh, quarantine because of the pandemic, right? So, what happens? As I've said earlier, um, the remaining nine. Nine meetings for the graduate school. Hindi namin alam kung paano with that nine. O paano namin tatapusin yung nine more hours. So how are we going to, you know, uh, what my, uh, what, how we're going to deliver those things? The uh, pedagogy, of course, the mode. Although we know very well na uh, thinking that time na siguro in two weeks time we'll be go back. We'll go back to classes. Or we'll go back to the classroom rather. But then the weeks that we were counting, you know, turn to turn to months. It's already nine months. Nine months and did So over that year, right, we're able to you know uh, figure out uh, the last remaining uh, nine meetings for that particular term. I gave to the professors, uh, I uh, you know the the liberty to choose what mode that they're going to use. They can use the uh, sabi ko ngas niyo no. Uh, namin yung messaging, yung messenger, Facebook messenger. Uh, some of the, some of them created blogs. Some professors are, are also very creative of you know uploading uh, their videos, learning uh, instructional materials via the YouTube, and then they just uh, you know give the link to their students and then they can watch there. 
yung iba naman, right? Uh, ako din, uh, I, I follow that one. I I downloaded some videos na from the YouTube, particularly related to my subject. And then, you know, uh, give it to my students na para panoorin nila. But later on, thinking, para nawawala yung personal touch. Okay? Nawawala yung, uh, since graduate school is a formal pro- uh, program, so para nawala po kami sa sistema ng remaining uh, remaining nine uh, hours. Although, as I've said, we tried our best not to, to really bridge it, to really, you know, uh, finish the term. Kaya nung during the mid-year term, uh, while well, the two other campuses limited their limited their uh, program offerings, kasi nga dirin nila lang kung paano nga itatawid. Um, we, the Midlanian campus, had a clear view on what we're going to officially, rather, what we would like to do during the mid-year term. The mid-year term kasi is the short term or yung summer po natin noon. It only comprise of six meetings or six weeks. So since uh, ganun din lang, so one of our professors in the Master in Information Technology, Professor uh, Lenda, offered us, reminded me that we have a existing tie-up with the NS Devil in South Korea. Doon pumasok na po yung UBEL Cloud Learning Management System po namin. Um, when I was still a chancellor at the Midlanian campus, uh, I made a I made a uh, tie up rather with uh, the NS Devil uh, based in South Korea, and then they developed the Ubiquitous, they developed actually the ubiquitous learning. So, marami po silang binigay sa university po namin na uh, advantages po namin. Like for example, the college entrance examination using the ubiquitous uh, kit. Uh, and then sabi ni Christian, uh, Professor Leda, that they have a uh, learning management system or LMS that uh, that particular company is offering us uh, to use for free, of course, definitely. Because um, uh, as a way of giving back probably to the university na nakatie up po nila. Now, meron pa naman po silang tie up. And I believe our present chancellor now uh, continued, uh, continued the partnership with them. So, we use the this one as our formal hub of learning. That's why during the major term, um, it is more formal, right? Although we were learning, uh, we were learning still. The faculty are learning, um, but I guess this second semester, this first semester, right? For this school year, uh, we're a bit perfecting it now. So let me uh, show you how the uh, UBL Cloud Learning Management System for us work. Okay, so. Here's the uh, interface of the UBL management uh, uh, LMS. It actually uh, is a combination of a cloud-based and ubiquitous learning management system. It is accessible through a web uh, browser and an, or even your cell, their cellular phone for students, right? Or smartphones, uh, iOS, right? I, iOS, right? Yes. There's a server for the LMS, uh, ULMS base. Uh, the server rather is based in South Africa. Korea. Now, here's your account. No? Um, there are three types of account users. Okay, the first one is the administrator uh, for the university administrator, see Mr. Professor Leda, uh, and then the teacher, the professor, and then the student. Only these three types of user accounts can uh, log into the ULMS. Okay. Now, in case of the graduate school. Um, after enrollment, I sent the I sent the list of enrolled students as well as the schedules of professors to the administrator, and automatically uh, uh, it segregates students per class, per teacher. So direction of pusha. So whenever uh, whenever the uh, professor logs logs into his account or her account rather, uh, you can you can. Uh, he can access all this, the, the, the subject that he has there. So the same with the students, okay? Default password were set by the administrator. However, uh, the professor or the student can actually customize it, right, or to modify it uh, for a safer, for a safer one uh, uh, when they get hold of, the, uh, of their uh, accounts already. And then the ULMS administrator also, when given the list of courses offered, I, I mentioned this earlier, it segregates all these things, right? So from class to class, from professor to professor. And when a teacher logs into the system, he automatically can see all the 
uh, subjects that they have there. The same with the student when he logs in. So therefore, what can a teacher do in the LMS? Now, here is your teacher's portal. I, I use my portal, okay? Uh, I use my, my page, actually, okay? Um, here, you can see the dashboard. You can see the, the highlighted with the red one. Now, there you can see the menu that facil uh, facilitates the navigability of the activities here. You have your courses, assignments, attendance of students getting in. Even if you are, even if you are not online, right, when the student opens your opens your uh, uh, class or your to probably uh, read your lessons or uh, um, download the material probably uh, the ULMS it actually records the students attendance in there so makikita mo uh, makikita ng professor kung kailan pumasok yung estudyante how many hours you spent no, in browsing your lessons uh, at least no, you can assess now kung uh, if he's interested. Also, nakikita mo rin, may mga estudyante na very seldom na pumasok. Yun na yun ang tutukan na lang, siguro by and the, the online meetings, okay? the synchronous meetings. Then you have also quizzes. Yes, of course, you can upload your quizzes in there. You have the forum and then the survey. And the quizzes uh, automatically checks also, right? Kung particularly kung yung mga, yung mga simple questions of yes or no or true or false or multiple choices that you can program and once that uh, once that student sends the uh, the answers automatically uh, assess and checks the assignment or the quiz rather now here are also the list of courses no uh, the teacher's dashboard also contains the list of courses assigned to him or her so if you could if you notice my classes are mostly on uh, seminar writing, uh, thesis writing, right? And then I have the administration of rural development and of course, social development. Another one here is the assignments, right? So it actually, uh, here you can um, uh, forward your assignment, just like what I've done here okay? uh, in rural development. So you can see the, uh, the uh, listings and the students can download from here, okay? And then you can go live also just like in any video conferencing uh, or yung ito, right? Parang synchronous meeting sa inyo. So your, stu your student, you can see them online. And then you have also the notification bar. Now it gives you update the student also. Kung, so for example, the, on the teacher's part, uh, if there is a submission of an assignment or a learning material, then it will be notified to your uh, cellular phone. Kung ano man yung mga nakalink sa ano Okay, so there you are. You have the uh, teacher's portal. Okay, now let's check. Let's check one by one. Okay, uh, the uh, inside the uh, professor's portal or page. Okay, so for example, uh, this one. You will see each course the teacher is assigned. He can create a lesson and upload its content. Okay, the uploading the content is like this. You can upload as a text box. You can upload as a button also. You can upload the picture, a video even. Like, for example, you, uh, you make your own video and then upload it here. Now, an example on the screen is a PDF which uh, I created, so which I uploaded for my student uh, last October 24. You can even upload some video. Your pieces as well as your surveys. Um, there, the ULMS uh, or uh, allows variety of media type that can be uploaded to the content builder. Okay. The contents are protected. It cannot be downloaded unless, of course, you give them the uh, you give them the permission to uh, to download. Okay, they can just they just view it. Kaya sabi ko kanina when they uh, this particular LMS can record how many minutes or how many hours the student spent now reading your uh, reading your material that you have uploaded. Now there's also a preview feature that will allow to check. Uh, how, um, first, how contents look like in the viewer before making available the viewer to the students. It's something you'd like to uh, check whether the, uh, how it looks like, right? Sabi ko sa inyo, it must be appealing also to, uh, to your students. So, you check mo muna before uploading it also. If you have also a series already of, uh, series of uh, learning materials or instructional materials, you can upload them all at once, right? But your student cannot view them unless, uh, what I mean here is, you upload them all, right? Then then you time them when that particular material will be appearing in the, the student page. So, kahit naka-upload sila, kaya 
uh, kung asynchronous yung uh, activities mo, i-upload mo lahat sila for the for four weeks, right? And then, all you have to do is wait for the notification to notification bar kung wag na notice kung may nagsasubmit. And then, i-time mo na lang kung uh, itong first uh, first lesson mo can go time out will be uh, published, uh, say for example, uh, Monday, the other one will be published Wednesday, the other one will be published uh, Friday, and the last one will be published by Sunday or Saturday. Okay, So, lalabas yun automatic. Okay, So, those are the features, right? Another one is... Um, we have also the, as I've said, you can have the, the quiz, right? Uh, using the LMS, you can administer your quizzes there. Uh, like, for example, multiple choices, your yes or no, or short answer type questions that can automatically check the correctness of students' answers. So you just upload it, the students will answer, and then automatically also, it will give the, it will give the score, right? The student can will know already uh, the, the scores he got from the, the quiz. And then... Ito yung makikita mo sa kanila, right? So, there is, uh, this, is the, this is actually the good uh, features of the LMS. Natutuwa ako kasi meron mga graph, right? Na nakikita ko how much progress your student had uh, over the lessons that you have, over the modules that you have uh, forwarded to them. So, the teacher also can check the submissions, uh, what specific requirements the student is not able to comply. So, uh, actually nakakatuwa, no? Natutuwa kami that we have this one there. This is the student portal. Uh, let me just... Uh, there. This is the student portal. So, when the student logs in, he would see his uh, classes. Like, for example, he has class on the theory and programming languages. He has a class also in the advanced uh, information technology, as well as a class in the administration of world development. So, whenever he clicks this one, uh, he enters now the web, uh, the page of the professor in charge for that one. And the one I saw, uh, shown you earlier, uh, do makikita naman yung, uh, uh, yung activities. I guess uh, these are all the things that uh, I need to give you, right? The student can view all these things. Uh, the calendar also is dedicated for its requirements. I can be reminded about it also. And you can join the go live for the class, right? Uh, whenever the teacher sends the link to them, that they can go live. Okay. Now to summarize what I've uh, uh, said earlier, the new normal of the society is anything but ordinary. Our attention right now is on online learning as it means to deliver instruction. The students who are at home, it is not necessarily bad to push for online learning. The new normal in education, it actually helps the education system to adopt effective as well as efficient platforms for systems that can unburden teachers from much of their clerical work so they can, can focus on the essential aspects of teaching, such as supporting and building the relationship with students. With regards to competency-based education, we can always link them to our activities this time. But as I've said earlier, the parameters for the parameters for those things. You have the teacher should be more creative in redesigning, revisiting the curriculum, revisiting the activities to be focused. Now, as we embark on this particular journey uh, in embracing these things, the school leaders as well as decision makers should not forget the students and families whom the current problems on equitable access and lack of enough funding may put at a disadvantage. Every child has the right to high quality education and our decision to move online should not make a high quality education as a privilege for those who can access the internet. As educators, our role is to break down the walls of, or barriers that prevent students from accessing and enjoying high quality education. So with this one, right? Uh, the new normal will let us always uphold the right to high quality education by providing multiple pathways of learning that can accommodate every student. One way is that is the competency-based learning education. And with this, I'd like to end my uh, short uh, talk with you. I hope you learned something, right? I hope that uh, you gain you gain insight of you had a pick in the college of graduate studies, and uh, hopefully that when we resume uh, the old activities that we have, we get the chance to meet personally. I get to go to your place, and you get to go to our place, and then can exchange pleasantly again. Thank you for the invitation for me to talk with you. It was really a pleasure today.
All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Nesperos, for that very uh, informative uh, talk or discussion regarding competency-based in a remote teaching and learning modality. And sir, we have really have gained a lot from this uh, or have uh, gained insights from this talk of yours. So before we proceed to our... Uh, okay, so we will now proceed with... Uh, the um, open forum and in a little while we will proceed with this so uh, but before that please don't forget to sign in for the attendance the link is already posted in our youtube channel or live <laughs> comment section and of course we also have evaluation form and please don't forget to answer these google forms for us to continuously improve our next webinar session so let us now proceed to our open forum, which will be facilitated once again by Dr. Roque Riqueno. Let us give him a warm virtual applause. Thank you, Mamban. Okay, at this time, we will now entertain questions uh, regarding the topic as presented by our guest speaker for this virtual uh, webinar. Is there any question from the audience, the cloud audience? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, present good morning, Dr. Nesperos. This is Alan Vergara. Uh, good morning, Alan. Uh, one I, can, of the... can, can I not see you? <laughs> ah. yes, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, I'm proud to be one of the students of DINSO, uh, my PhD. Uh, this actually, sir, I um, thank you very much for a very informative and comprehensive discussion. By the way, sir, congratulations that, that, that DIMSO is now uh, ISO certified. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. I am quite confused about OBE and CBE implementation, the outcome-based education and the competency-based education. Can you give us an, an explicit understanding, sir, based on your practice of the difference between outcome-based education to competency-based education? Which do you think of the two approaches the best in this time of pandemic? Actually, uh, both are good. Uh, nothing to, there's nothing really to compare, right? Well, the, the Commission on Higher Education actually mandated us that uh, our curriculum, right, uh, in particular, the lesson delivery should be outcomes-based, right? So therefore, uh, we let our students do the activity, right, while we supervise them, right? Well, the uh, competency base is more on the students doing it to their own, but you have to, you know, at the end of a specific uh, period of time, you have to assess their, assess their accomplishment, you assess their, their skills, or their, their uh, yeah, their skills. As I've said, if I'm going to link it from our experience in the graduate school, the uh, uh, technology-enabled instruction that we have is more of a competency base because we let our students really read a lot of uh, material, right? Not a lot. It's just uh, uh, enough now for them to learn a lot of things, okay, on their own, and then experiment on their own um, without our supervision, okay. Uh, and then when they when the time comes for assessment, then they would uh, they would demonstrate their skills that they that they have learned from the uploaded materials or from the, what was sent to them. And like in the outcomes base, while the professors is there, right. The, the professor comes to, to just to supervise them, right? Uh, um, step by step, probably, right? Uh, but we let our students do the activity, meaning they would learn from their understanding of the lesson. The, the concept of uh, similar, the same, right? But the 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 manner of how we uh, the manner of how we, um, as for example, demonstrate it's different, right? As I said, uh, competency based. Um, we let the student do on his own pace, right? Uh, we let the student uh, understand the matter without the supervision. I like the other one, we are there inside the classroom. If you ask me if during this particular pandemic when we are working from home, since we cannot supervise our students' activities, right? Uh, then probably the, the activity or the uh, learning material or instructional materials that we uh, should be giving them should be the, ito, yung yung discuss ko po sa inyo. But as I've said, both our uh, OBE and uh, competency base are 
okay. So, depende lang po kung paano ito ginagamit. Um, sabi mo nga, right, kung pandemic ngayon at na working from home ka, yun, you cannot supervise your student doing their activity and probably can uh, shift to this one. Okay. And then, pero uh, the school uh, must have a standardized uh, uh, assessment tool also, right? So, hindi pwedeng, uh, hindi pwedeng wala yun. So, your school must sit together, right, and come up with a policy if you would be, uh, if you'd be, uh, you know, adopting the, uh, uh, this particular concept. So that uh, kung marami yung estudyante nyo kasi nabibigyan nyo na ganito, pare-pareho yung grading systems po ninyo, yung assessment, uh, assessment uh, matrix po ninyo sa kanila. And I guess that, that uh, uh, I guess that that's it. Right? Uh, that's the difference of the two. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank sir. you Mr. Alan Vergara. And thank you, Sir Nisperos. Um, some more questions? Uh, how about in our YouTube live? Live. Sorry, while well, waiting for a question, um, if I may ask from the Mindanao State University, I never had the time really to, to discuss it with you. Uh, you have your LMS already. You have your formal LMS that you are that your university is adopting also, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have. Uh, uh, we call we, it Mole. Uh, that's um, MSUIAT Online Learning, learning environment. environment. Yes, sir. It was created so, by, it was designed by your own IT. Yes, sir. Actually, yes, sir. it has started way back, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 2005, because ah. I am one of those students who have uh, really, who was asked by our professor to really practice the use of MOLE. And then from time to time, it was actually improved. And for now, it was really very accessible, and our students, uh, since first year college, they are already using it. Yes, ma'am. So, Kasi you have established one. Parang sinabi ko rin sa inyo noon na uh, the graduate school is trying to learn also, right? Our experience in the graduate school, we're trying to learn. Uh, you know, uh, we just recently adopted the ULMS, right, for, for us uh, in the graduate school, in the graduate programs, uh, by the way. Because we did not assign it to our, uh, we did not assign it to our baccalaureate program, so the undergrad, uh, oh. for the reason that uh, yun nga, uh, ang mandate po kasi na gusto nila is mag-module muna kami because uh, considering the limitations or the difficulty of our students connecting, not all of them have the equal uh, opportunity to have those gadgets as well as the connection. So, pati po sa inyo na pati pala lahat po ng estudyante po ninyo na uh, actually, sir, um, our students was uh, during the pandemic, we had uh, conducted surveys and we have classified our students by uh, categories, right, sir? Okay. Okay. That was category one, two, and three. For category one, students uh, do not have any access to internet connectivity as well as uh, do not have gadgets at all. So they will, uh, we, we will be giving them modules of which they will be learning by face. And then um, we will just be calling them uh, the, the, the way of giving them um, access to the teaching modality is to call them or ask them for, for any um, clarifications or if they have questions related to their lessons. But for C2 or category two, they will have, um, they have um, uh, the capacity for the internet connectivity and at the same time they have their gadgets but uh, siguro hindi masyadong malakas yung internet parang ganun po nasa nasa, uh, nasa center po siya and then category 3 uh, students are those students really that have all the access and have all the gadgets that are necessary for their online learning so actually uh, bef uh, before the start of the first semester sir we have conducted a series of webinar trainings for our teachers and our syllabus was actually designed uh, as a RTL syllabus that's remote teaching and learning syllabi. So we have um, created, uh, specified there what we are going to do if the students are C1 or C2 or C3. So parang yun po yung ginawa namin. But actually sir, the, the, the difficulty is still there and we are really still um, very um, 
uh, there are still uh, there are a lot of challenges that we have encountered during the implementation of this especially yes, yes to our uh, technology education program especially laboratory subjects that that is where the difficulty lies so upon hearing your um, uh, talk or discussion related to your TEI that was way back 2012 and Dr. Roque also informed us that your way of assessing your students are actually based on uh, they, they, you are going to um, do the Skype. Okay, do the Skype interview. But before the interview, you you give them the activity, and then after the activity, you validate what they have learned through a Skype interview. And I think that's a very very good practice, so that uh, still the competency and uh, the genuine the genuineness of the student output is really validated. I think para sa akin po mas maganda po talaga yon. Yes, ma'am. And then we require them also to come home uh, every year and stay with us for two weeks. Every day that there are six days a week, uh, they would be staying with us and then really learn face-to-face uh, -face with the professor in charge before. So most most often than that, among professors when I'm in, uh, yun na, uh, competency-based kasi yun, uh, chine-check na lang ho niya yung mga, no, hindi na ho siya nag-lecture. It is, uh, we allow the, the, the student to demonstrate particularly technology programs. Kasi uh, yung TEI ho namin, sa temp program po talaga karamihan doon, yung kay na Mr. Roque. Uh, okay. I mean, uh, that's, that's probably what could be, you know, uh, both of in the graduate school. Uh, but in the undergrad, nasabi ko kanina sa module, although tama po kayo, na nag-survey nag din po yung university namin. Pero yung man, uh, para pare-pareho po yata, uh, I could not be sure of this, right? Um, module po yung pinapagawa, ay yung pinapapagay po namin. But we encourage, we encourage also the professors to uh, a synchronous activity like, you know, uh, like this. Uh, just to know the other details, right? The, to check on the student also whether they are coping with the rigors of the, rigors of the uh, module given. And I guess that is also a good practice by them. Okay. Okay. By the way, the, the Molly, sir, is uh, powered by Moodle. The, our uh, MHIAT online learning environment is powered by Moodle. And I, I just also want to share with regards to the laboratory that I have uh, in my class uh, online. I, I apply the what we call any desk, any desk apps. So th there is a compu uh, computer in the laboratory and the, the laptop of the student online or desktop, he can access the, the particular computer for him to perform the activity, especially in uh, PLC programming. So oh. they can do the programming in the virtual by using any desk application. Parang, parang Google Docs ganun ba yan? or Google Word. Parang ganun. Kasi sa akin po kasi, wala ako sa si skill po, sir Roque, no? Uh, pero maganda yung sinabi po ninyo. That's actually good. Um, sa akin po kasi, that's more of uh, uh, researches po yung mga sa subject ko. Uh, particularly to my advice is, meron pong uh, uh, Google Word ba yun? Google Doc. Na uh, pag nag-online po ako, eh, when I open my, uh, my document, and then together with my advice, we can together write. Uh, while I'm writing, he's uh, saying it, he can inject a lot of things. So we need to collaborate already from there. Parang siguro sinasabi mo na na uh, from the laboratory equipment uh, that, they, that they can manipulate right online na nakikita mm -hmm. sa'yo, nakikita din si estudyante. In the same manner, on my case, as uh, not on the technology side, right, uh, that uh, I edit uh, I, I edit the manuscript of my advices, we open the, the Google Word, something like that, or Google yes. Talk. Uh, and then we can uh, together edit the, the manuscript and then we can interact with it. Um, they, in that's a, the role of the that. teachers talaga to, to look for other modality to, to inculcate what, want, what we want to impart to the students. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, tama po. Um, it's actually for teachers to look for other means, right? Like for example, uh, kami, we have we will be scheduled. We have scheduled the comprehensive examination, but because we are still barred from you know the from the, the mass gathering of students, right? we said we were not able to go to 
uh, conduct the uh, comprehensive examination last May and then last July. So the, we are conducting it December for three terms, right? The, the, the May term, the July term, as well as this present term. Now, since we are not allowed for mass gathering for, to, to uh, bring back students to the classroom, so we designed, uh, we designed the online comprehensive examination, the qualifying examination. But there was always a question, of course, there. You know, how, the, 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 how do how do we administer it? And then, butin lang ho nandito si Aling mang Google, right, <laughs> Mr. Google. Sabi ko nila. So we have the Google proctor, so they can proctor the examinees. And then we have also the the plagiarism checker in the university in our college, right? Once you sub, uh, you're probably familiar with that one because your your manuscript went several times in there, right? So. Uh, upon submission, directly goes to the uh, plagiarism checker, right? If it's uh, more than 10%, it's probably just the time that we have to call the attention of the, the examinee or something like that. Those are the initial things that we are uh, thinking about. Tama po kayo. Now we have to be, you know, be, uh, constantly searching for something better or something appropriate to deliver our lessons. Right, sir. So, by the way, uh, for, the, for the audience, if you are hesitant to ask question in English. Uh, our guest speaker can understand Tagalog, <laughs> but if you also know the Ilocano uh, language, uh, our guest speaker is a pure Ilocano. He can understand. <laughs> yes. But you can do yes, it sir. in your question in English or in in Tagalog because our my our yes, sir, I was born here in San Fernando. My father is Ilocano. My mom is a pure Manilenya. Uh, uh, although we were raised in San Fernando, uh, my, love, my, my mom uh, only loved one Ilocano, not the culture, but my father. So, <laughs> pati rin ho kami, uh, ang Ilocano ho namin, although nakakaintindin din, pero baluktot ang Ilocano because he never, he never, she never taught us to really speak Ilocano at home that time. <laughs> Isa lang ang mahal niya, tatay ko. <laughs> I see some okay, chat groups here, sir. I see some questions in the chat box. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, the, the, the question from Sir Norhan Kudarat, official. DepEd has MELC, Most Essential Learning Competencies. Meron, meron po ba nito sa CHED? Um, I'm not so sure of if the Commission on Higher Education came up with their own values or with their own uh, uh, outcomes, right, or mandates for, for this particular one. Uh, apologies for that if I cannot uh, really... Uh, straight uh, uh, answer the, the question, right? But definitely, uh, when we came up with uh, this particular scheme, right, of, uh, you know, working from home, and then we're not actually allowing students, the Commission of Higher Education uh, probably have set the parameters for this one. Um, allow me to probably look into this, but uh, for our university, we do have, okay, we, we have our learning continuity plan, and we, uh, we also map the things that we, we will be delivering, the expectations for our students as well as the expectation for the professors to be delivering the, these particular lessons. And if I may speak for the graduate school, it's also different from us. So uh, while the undergrad uh, are using the, some other modalities, we are actually continuing our classes as if it's normal. Uh, just like Mr. Alan Pergara, who is a student of Dr. Jim Paya, you know, uh, is religiously attending classes online. Na lang. So parang, parang walang pinagbago. It's just a new dimension lang of uh, delivering the lessons. But uh, as again, apologies. Now, I cannot actually uh, speak for uh, the issuance of CHED at this time because I haven't seen. But uh, I know for sure that there is. Okay, from Victor Rosales. Uh, what are the best practices in DEMSU? in delivering competencies-based instruction for all courses or subjects that requires laboratory? Okay. Um, what I learned of, sir, in the baccalaureate, okay, uh, we don't have a laboratory in the graduate school, sir. Uh, but what I learned from the baccalaureate, the, the professors are uh, videoing themselves, right, uh, and then uploading it uh, from there, an, as, uh, an assessment of, an assessment of the, uh, learning uh, material that was uploaded no, is actually ensured also. Uh, dito nga po lumalabas na ang dami kong nare-receive. I receive a lot of uh, uh, requests from our former students who graduated already for professors or teachers already in Dingsu who made their, uh, say for example, uh, uh, 
uh, mga learning materials po nila sa, sa, as a part of their thesis or dissertation, particularly yung mga trainers po nila. Uh, like for example, the recent na in ko po yung ipahiram yung refrigera- uh, no-frost refrigeration uh, trainer na gagamitin po na isang uh, professor ho namin. So, uh, as part in the letter stated, uh, i-digital po niya yun uh, in, in, in something, right? Uh, um, bibigyan, gagamitin po niya yung manual to be uploaded in the students so that the students would learn something. And then later on, uh, I'm not so sure of the manner for the assessment later, pero definitely there's an assessment for that, for the undergraduate. As for the graduate school, uh, we do not have a laboratory subjects, purely lecture type. Yeah. Uh, ang assessment lang po namin dun is their understanding, the cognitive uh, understanding of the concepts and principles that we present during the classes. And those are assessed through, uh, of course, the submissions of, uh, say for example, uh, uh, research-based activities. Okay, another question from Dr. Roxanne Consolacion. Since we are new to this modality, sir, how do you encourage your faculty and students to have positive attitudes in doing the remote teaching and learning modality? Oh, uh, yes, Dr. Consolacion, <laughs> thank you for the question, right? Uh, although I've been asking that myself also, um, but they did not they did not ask my professors how they are doing. <laughs> we probably I, I took for granted that since this is the mandate for us, right? Whether we like it or not, we have to embrace it. But then, uh, just like uh, any parent would advise, right, their kids at home or any probably uh, president in a university, uh, find uh, the, uh, giving uh, giving advice to the professors now in in this field. Uh, Find motivation in what you're doing, right? Find creativity. Anyway, uh, I don't know if you are working already, uh, you're reporting to your offices already, or you're still working from home. If you are working from home, that is a, already a, a bonus to you, right? I would say that. I would, uh, I would um, uh, borrow the statement of our president. Uh, it is a bonus already for us working at home. Uh, they have the they have the comforts, right? So probably if I may continue from there, find uh, motivations, find motivations there actually. Uh, to me, if I would, if you would ask me, uh, I prefer. Although nahihirapan din po ako, but uh, I like it this way. Why? Because uh, since I'm 55 years old, nearing vulnerability, right? Sabi ng nila, I don't like to face my students in class with the. Uh, the spiking, uh, the, the the rising cases of COVID in in our province. Actually, marami na naman po kami sa La Union, kaya nagihigpit na naman po yung borders sa amin. So, uh, Dr. Consolacion, I guess there are so many motivations, right, uh, that you can find. You are safe. Uh, that's one thing. And uh, you're not you're not meeting your students. Uh, you're not meeting your students uh, in in the classroom. So therefore, uh, during the during your free hours, probably uh, you're more freer, right? Uh, you can design a better uh, a better uh, PowerPoint presentation. If uh, if uh, uh, make your PowerPoint uh, interesting, right? Uh, and then you all have the online sources, right? So the the library for online is actually so vast, right? All you have to do is to encode the word, and everything is all your fingertips, and all your in your in your screen already. All you have to do is to filter which one you would like to be uh, delivering to your student. As I've said, find motivations in the situation now. Um, one thing is that you are safe. Uh, one thing that we are not actually compromised. We were not compromising ourselves. We are not compromising our students. And if our students find difficulty also of uh, you know uh, reaching out to us, probably. Uh, there are so many reasons. One, probably they don't have connectivity, and that's the time for you probably to go out a few way, right? Of you know, um, uh, making a module, uh, but make sure that the module is actually validated and assessed uh, before delivering it to your student. In 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 such a way, in that way rather, uh, uh, we provide equal opportunities for all our students. As for us teachers, as I've said, find motivation. If you are working from home, then that's, that's, that's a good motivation already. If, you're, if, you, if your dean has required you to, <laughs> to report back to office already, because I, I know this one because I receive a lot of luck when uh, we receive a mandate from the university that we will be reporting back to work, right? I mean, even with the cases of COVID still, uh, we require, we're required already to report to work. 
and our faculty were you know complaining from uh, complaining uh, in my office telling me bakit sir sa uh, nagko-commute po kami ganito ganyan so we can't do anything but you know uh, we are still lucky because we are provided by we are, we are provided with one day work from home uh, specifically for the graduate school professors only uh, so during saturdays we work from home um, and then Fridays is our day off, so I guess it's good enough for us. No? I mean, if you if you ask me, it's a good it's a good enough motivation. And secondly, uh, I don't know to the undergrad. Because we have many students, we are graduate school, because it's only a few. So um, we have a population of five hundred something, or four hundred something. So uh, the, the 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 chances of people or chances of students going go to the office and visiting us is quite nil. So those are the motivations, I guess. No, uh, encouraging them. I'm not. Uh, yeah, just find motivation, mam, mam, uh, consolation. The good thing is you are safe at home. You are safe uh, having your class online. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, another question again from Dr. Oksan. Can you share to us, sir, your best practices on how do you monitor? monitor quality online course design of the faculty and assess if students are learning the required competency as achieved oh, okay uh, can, 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 can i guess sir i did not get i was looking from the <laughs> from the, uh, the message words uh, <laughs> how do you monitor quality online course design of the faculty and assess if students is or are learning the required competency is achieved Okay, sir. Um, I mentioned a while back that we are using the uh, ULMS or the UBL Cloud, right? The reason why I, the reason why I, uh, uh, the one that's the one we adopted instead of just go, going to the free app like Google Google Classroom, right? Uh, the ULMS Cloud has an administrator. Um, I can always monitor professors, right? The uh, the, the the one that they upload. Uh, it's not that speaking into their uh, privacy, but uh, part of supervision, right? Because uh, unlike the regular classes, when I go around to check whether they are present or not, right? In the Google Classroom, um, I can request the administrator to check uh, the attendances of professors, the uh, the uploading of their uh, the uploading of their uh, instructional materials. As to the quality of the instructional material. Um, I would boast off of our recent system, yung pag uh, pag iso ko sa namin. So what we did is, uh, what we did at the college is we created a local, uh, a local committee, not to to sub, uh, subject specialists, right? So all the, uh, all uh, learning materials has to pass through there a week a week before it will be uploaded. That's the ideal. Um, but probably we will be implementing that this this particular coming semester. Um, for us to be uh, ensured of the quality of the uh, instructional materials our students are getting. Most often than not, in the graduate school, kasi, uh, while we encourage them a um, uh, variety of uh, learning materials, uh, most often, uh, kasi ang nilalagay po nila is the PowerPoint presentation. Um, uh, pini PDF po nila yon and then uploading them. Although I also mentioned them that they have to upload also lecture materials that's really for students to read, right? Because in the in the PowerPoint presentation, these are these are actually congested, so it's just the idea. Then uh, it's up to the students to really understand. Although we allow that one, why? Because in the graduate school, this is more of independent learning. Uh, so students are supposed to be given the task also to you know uh, additional additional readings, additional information that they have. Uh, I guess. Uh, Alan, Mr. Vergara, who's here, I could see the name here, could attest to that one. I don't know if uh, he's also having uh, a diarrhea of learning <laughs> materials, but I, I, I mentioned to the professors that uh, they should be curators, right? Not a dumper of information. So, as I said, uh, I'm a psychologist also by, by education, so I know how the mind works. If it's too much already, it's too much information, you, really, you, know, you don't want to work, okay? Nung una, uh, during the start of the pandemic, wala masyado pinapagawa ang university, right? So our, our mind become idle. So when they start calling us back to work and then they gave us a lot of work, <laughs> the mind also did not work. Why? Because it stopped, right? Kasi <laughs> nga, masyadong marami. Pero um, uh, since uh, it's a mandate for us, 
then as I've said, we try to find uh, uh, meaning to what we're doing. Uh, like for example, yung ISO ho namin. So na, na, na systematize ho namin lahat ang activities sa graduate school. Hopefully, right? Although we pass already, right? But hopefully to sustain it, most especially this coming semester, right? That uh, learning materials before uploading would be, you know, passed through a, 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 a checking before we give it to the students. Like for example, editing, right? Para hindi naman mali yung grammar niya. Yung presentation ko nga kanina, may, may typographical error kasi nasa kaka-encode siguro. So, it should pass through quality assurance. Yes, sir. And sir, again, from, ano, from Pini Junior Mangkau, how are we going to handle work immersion for students in this new normal? I guess, sir, we cannot do anything for work immersion at this time because Commission on Higher Education part us from. So, uh, I'm not so sure in your area in Mindanao. Uh, kami kasi dito sa Luzon talagang ang taas po ng, ang taas po ng uh, cases po namin ng COVID. Uh, I'm not so sure po sa, sa area po ninyo. You're not in Cebu anyway, right? So uh, Cebu yata yung malaki, mala, mataas. Luzon, Luzon area is one. Now in, in San Fernando City, although this is just a component city of the province of La Union, there was even a time na kami lang ho ang nag-ECQ. Uh, uh, so definitely, um, hindi ho tayo pwedeng magpalabas, right, na mga estudyante ho natin to go on immersion. But I suggest, right, that activities during immersion could also be internalized, right, by uh, making a, uh, a situationers, right, uh, situationer, uh, ang tawag ho doon, mga situationers or reading materials, right, uh, and then give it to the students for the meantime, right, um, case studies even right for them to uh, for them to uh, to read and then analyze and then later or probably in your assessment right in your assessment uh, check whether they they understood the they're able to understand the, the situation just like going on a uh, on, on the job training going on a uh, going on a field trip going on or something because this is the thing that you cannot do anything about instead we just become creative in the use of our uh, instructional materials, as I've said, uh, situationers or case uh, case uh, case studies, right? That uh, uh, the students can learn, right? Uh, based on the experiences of these uh, particular cases. Uh, I'd like to answer one, one here, sir, that I'm reading. The Google Proctor, uh, coming from... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce Pini or Pini, uh, Man, uh, Mancow. Uh, he said, a Google proctor, uh, first time to hear that Google product does MSU IP uh, Gmail account support Google proctor. I guess that's, that's for your administration to answer, right? Pero the Google proctor, I learned about it also a few days ago when I had a meeting with the faculty uh, because our problem, as I've said, our problem is on uh, how we're going to manage the comprehensive examination. Uh, considering the comprehensive is two days, right? At maghapon yun from 8 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon. Uh, alangan po na nagtitest yung isang sudyante, nakabinabantay ang kukuk siyang parang ganito na tinitignan ko, na we allow naka-open yung camera, right? So, uh, parang uh, parang ho hindi pwede. And then, our uh, facilitator for MIS said, we can use the Google Proctor, okay? So uh, we give, we upload the material. I'm not so familiar with it yet, but I could, the, 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 the concept here is, I upload them, we upload the material, right? It's up to the Google, uh, the Google account, the Google app, right? To administer the, administer the examination. If you say, for example, the first questions be given at eight o'clock, so the, 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 the Google Proctor will, uh, will immediately give the, the questions at 8 o'clock, the other one at 9 o'clock, the other one at 10. And then later on, before the deadline, right, the Google proctor will collate the, the, the examinations. Kasi mag, mag exams naman siya dun sa online. So dun, dun mismo sa, sa application na yun. So whether we like it or not, at uh, say for example, the designated time, right, uh, i-collate na po ng uh, proctor po yun. Diretso na po dun sa pupunta doon sa uh, link kung saan i download ko namin sa the download namin sa office and from there it will go directly to the uh, plagiarism checker 
kasi syempre online po yan, baka kasi uh, nag-copy-paste, copy-paste na po sila yan. So it should be the concept that we are trying to, you know, test from our students, particularly the comprehensive examination. So that's actually the Google Pro Proctor. I, I guess it's free app also that you can use. Um, I'm not so sure if it's restricted in your in your uh, campus, but if you're using the Google Classroom, if you're go uh, using the uh, Google Meet uh, and Google, uh, some other Google activities, right, or apps, then I guess this is also open for, for you. But as I said, uh, uh, I'll, I'll throw it to Dr. Ricky no, to answer it if it's allowed for you. It's like it's actually supporting your uh, uh, domain in your domain. This is a PhD TEM student. Good morning, sir. I am a student of PhD TEM. Can you share to us, sir, your best practices on how do you assess the performance of your students? Like, for example, in electricity, particularly in electrical wiring installation, even though it is possible to demonstrate that activity through virtual demonstration, but the problem is how the students will to the return, we'll demonstration, the return demonstration if don't have the materials to do that at home because they cannot afford to buy those materials needed in the demonstration unlike in the face-to-face -face, that the materials is provided in our laboratory. Uh, sir, uh, let me share uh, with regards to this uh, electrical wiring installation in, in my uh, subject. Um, during this time, under undergrad students, my undergrad students, uh, we do Google Meet, and then for the ac laboratory activity, I, I told them that uh, during the electrical wiring installation, laboratory uh, really needs the intensive uh, supervision because it deals with electricity. You know? So during this time, we cannot do that. But what I did, I let them, I let them uh, do the activity just like I, I did in the face-to-face -face before, uh, through paper, uh, paper works. No? Uh, for example, uh, they do, uh, I will give them the schematic diagram of a certain task, and then I let them draw the actual wiring diagram out of the given schematic diagram. So showing in the actual wiring diagram, the overload protective device, uh, assuming installed, uh, they, they do it in the paperwork. And then using the conduit pipes as the raceway uh, for the wires to uh, connect from one device to the other. And how they connect properly based on the standard and what is the right uh, splice or electrical joints to be used for that particular job and also for the standard based on Philippine electrical code the the minimum requirements of the wires considered as allowance of the wires entering any box whether it is a panel board a utility box or junction box those are the standards to be considered and for, I, I, I am also, I am just focusing on the electrical connection, but for the pipe bending, it is really need a face-to-face -face activity. Uh, but they, they can do, uh, the, the one that I require them to also, uh, for, for the first activity, I let them perform the um, or oh, different wire splices and the commonly used wire splices because there are so many wire splices time consuming. So I only perform them the, I let them perform only the, the, the applicable, the very useful uh, wire, wire splices. splices. That is in relation to electrical wiring installation, sir. Uh, sino to? Si, uh, the one, Raymond, uh, Raymond Velasco. So the, more the theoretical yes, uh, thank you, sir Rocky, for you know you answered it for me. Uh, <laughs> but let me let me emphasize this also. This is where uh, school support comes in, right? Um, the materials can be provided by the school, 
right, uh, to a select uh, individuals, particularly uh, the professors, uh, siguro, so choice ng professor kung sino uh, uh, pagde-demonstrate niya online, right? Uh, but not the, 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 it should be the less dangerous activities, okay? If it's just splicing, then probably uh, the, the college or the administra your administration can uh, uh, provide uh, materials for this one to be delivered in the homes of the uh, these students, and then via online, right? They can they can demonstrate, right? Based on the concept that you that the teacher have uploaded, right? On how this particular activity be done. As I said, you have to be creative in this one. Um, um, you can allow your students to uh, video themselves, right? Uh, video themselves, uh, not necessarily during uh, uh, this one, right? So they they have to video themselves, and then later on. They have to upload it in a, say, for example, in a blog or in a, uh, in a uh, telegram or in a chat group or anything, right? For other students to, uh, for other students to probably uh, appreciate what they have done or uh, their the mastery of the concepts. However, you can choose students also to really demonstrate uh, in a synchronous activity like this one. Um, but the school has to provide the materials. We cannot let allow our students to be probably uh, buying their own materials. Because po. Um, online learning is the same as the same as supposed to be classroom learning. If they are inside the classroom and the, the college or the administration is providing the materials for their activity, why can't we just provide them? You know, yes, uh, the, the, the amount of the amount of wires probably that they could be using for uh, splicing something, then we can deliver them to the to the homes of the students. And from there, right, uh, the student would be uh, appreciated you more, right? Instead of just uh, uh, you know, uh, letting them read the material, but drawing, uh, making a drawing also uh, on, say, for example, different connections, A, C, B, C, or something, uh, just like what Dr. Rekina said. It's actually is a is a creative way also now of making the students, uh, you know, uh, learn something, uh, a master of something, and uh, also the professor's way of determining whether the students have uh, learned learned also something, right? But as I've said. Uh, in this particular issue, um, here comes the support. Here comes the support of the, the school no? uh, by providing the materials for the students. So you, you can call your president, you can call your dean. No? <laughs> so another question from Nur Ain Abdulaziz. What are the significant issues or efficiencies faced by students and instructors on this system? How to cope with it? Come again, sir. Uh, pardon yes. me. Uh, uh, question from Abdulaziz. What are the significant issues or efficiencies, efficiencies faced by students and instructors on this system? Ngayon siguro, ang pandemic. Um, first of all, first of all, um, nothing, I would say, right, nothing beats a face-to-face uh, -face classes, right? Uh, it's still, I believe, it's still the best way, like for you may ask my uh, opinion. But since we are faced with this one, right, so as I've said, on the part of the teacher, you have to be innovative, right, in delivering your lessons, uh, particularly, say for example, it's not just about the, it's not just about PowerPoint. It's not just about the lecture notes. There are other, there are more other ways to probably deliver uh, lessons, right? Uh, for example, uh, uh, why don't you video yourself and upload to YouTube, right? So instead of just you know, uh, the students can go back, go back. Probably you can uh, you can you can gain uh, you can gain some some fans in there, right? So uh, because you're demonstrating your your activity there, I guess one. In, 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 if I'm mistaken, in the in my uh, request for request for uh, supplies, which I submitted a uh, couple of weeks ago, um, I, I noticed one faculty requested for ring light. Um, of course, I, 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 I asked what's ring light for, right? Ah, yung palaga gamitin po nila sa pag pagpo-project po ng sarili nila, right? Para mag, siguro para maputi yung <laughs> something like that. So, so hindi pwede yung, yung, uh, yung, yung, parang siguro may ring light po kayo sa inyo yan, kasi magandang, magandang registry ni Mr. Rock sa, sa screen, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so parang ganun siguro, no? Um, now I get to appreciate our professors for, you know, for thinking more than what I probably been, you know, imposing in them. 
So may mga uh, and then nag nag-request na rin po, nag-request na rin po ako ng ng mga mga video cams, right? So para uh, we can you know, dem- demonstrate actually, no? Uh, para hindi naman po ako mailang. One time kasi na nag-video po, nag-video po kami. Nag-video po ako sa bahay which I uploaded in like Uh, ang naging audience ko po yung misis ko at saka yung anak ko. Kasi nagmumukha akong tanga na nagsasalita na parang sa, sa, sa board, right? <laughs> na without anyone in, 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 in that one. So I requested my, my, my wife and my, my daughter kasi kami yung tatlo lang ko dito sa bahay kasi my two other kids are away, right? So sila yung, sila yung uh, audience ko and siya na rin, sila rin na nagbibideo sa akin. So it turned out, of course, it needs editing. Uh, pero it turns out better. Probably the next time I'm going to do it, uh, siguro uh, I'll be able to master it already. I mean, gaganda na po siguro yung presentation ko. Probably you can do that too, right? Uh, kasi uh, naka, naka, naka-quarantine po kami. Most especially when I was, uh, I was forced to go on a quarantine, 14 days quarantine because I was a secondary uh, contact to a COVID case, right? So, alam po po yung pakiramdam na uh, you're waiting whether uh, you're waiting for the swab test to come out. So yun ang ginawa ko that time eh. So while I was quarantined, I made all my my lessons, right? I mean, uh, ang dami kong na-open na website. Uh, kasi yun lang naman ang source ko natin, nasa ko, sa bahay tayo. And then, uh, you know, uh, I was... Uh, I was able to do my my background now my 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 place <laughs> so para pag nakiki video conference ako nag video ako or something maganda ganda itsura ko ng konti para you know. <laughs> so become creative uh, be creative po yun yung laptop sir sa mga <laughs> yung laptop para sa mga teachers <laughs> yes sabi po dito do not, they don't have the materials to do that at home because they cannot afford to buy those materials sabi ko nga po sa inyo kanina yung question po dito ng I don't know, wala naman pong pangalan dito sa chat box. Uh, as I've said nga po, this, this is where your school can come in, right? Uh, we do not expect our students to be, you know, uh, to be uh, buying all the materials, which normally in a laboratory, uh, laboratory they're uh, freely doing it. So, uh, parang normal din po ang operations pa rin ng school. Bibili ko ng mga materials na to. Only that, you have to apportion in each of your students so that they can perform. So, for example, uh, uh, different types of splice, Splice one probably could be given to uh, student A. Splice two would be given to student B, something like that. So um, definitely, I agree with you. They don't have the, the capacity. They don't have the means probably to buy all these things. So this school can come in and support this. Yes, all right. Sir. So I think I, I there just is... May I share, sir? There's also another one here. Hi, Dr. Esperos. He said, I was able to meet you, oh, really, personally, when we visit your school. Thank you very much for the share on your QA monitoring, uh, QA monitoring. So we can reflect on the improved our ways by benchmarking how you do it. Ah, Dr. Consolation. Sorry for, uh, uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Um, I was then, In the yeah, I was then the chancellor that time. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I was at the, at the other at the other uh, campus that time. So now I'm not I may probably remember the face, sir. But the, probably actually, if I could see the face and can actually see the name, but reading the name on the chat box, because hindi wala na sa isip ko sa dami po ng sa dami po ng namit ko na 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 yung dalawa sinama ko. Yes, sir. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. We cannot go to San Juan anymore, sir, because <laughs> because, the, because of the, uh, you know, uh, ang taso nang, nag-spike na naman po kami uh, uh, two days ago. So, we are na, hindi naman sa high 10, no? Although we are still can go out. Pero, uh, binabantayan po kasi in one, one, one municipality talaga kung lumobo yung, uh, lumobo po yung, ano, yung COVID cases. Mm-hmm. So, So wala Although, nags- we're not wishing na we're wala not wishing nags- na uh, lum- lumaki yung para work from home kami pero <laughs> um, you know as I told you we in the graduate school we're 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 accustomed to it already we're used to it already we're loving working from home we're loving uh, we're loving our classes online although mahihirapan ho kami pero uh, as I said earlier kanina the motivation behind it is we're not 
compromise. We're not exposed. We're, we're not compromising anyone. We're not com uh, we're not exposing anyone. So we're still delivering our huh. plan. What are the advantages yes, and limitations on the use of competency-based instruction in remote teaching? Advantages and limitations. Okay, one advantage. Yes, sir. Actually, it's just a disadvantage as well as an advantage. When, stu when students are given the material for, uh, for learning, right, uh, he can use that to his advantage because he can, he can, work, in, uh, he can work on his time, right? On its motivation, on his uh, on his flexibility, uh, but the disadvantage is there is um, well the student can work on his own right on his in, in, in his spacing right that the teacher cannot supervise right um, they can we can only assess each other we can only assess uh, the student's performance when when the time comes for you to you know check on the mastery of the skill. Say when you say, for example, when tatawagin um, mo to to demonstrate. But then, um, as I said earlier, they have to be flexible in here. Um, if, for example, the 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 skill is not mastered yet, right? There are still some flaws. They probably can uh, give more allowances by extending uh, a bit more of the time for the student to you know to learn the concepts of the particular material. Otherwise, uh, kung hindi kasi yung, hindi po niya mamamaster yon at hindi niya ma-demonstrate well yung kailangan po i-demonstrate uh, based from the assessment of uh, CBL, hindi po papasa yung isang estudyante. So, dapat po ma-emphasize si student to na the, the, the learning materials to be given to the student, right? In particular, the outcome ng mga outcome ng mga material na yun, dapat ma-demonstrate po niya. Otherwise, hindi po siya mabibigyan ng grade. Yun, yun naman po yung ano niya. But the advantage here is, sabi ko nga, the student can, uh, can have his own uh, pace, although, although in, a, in a time frame, but, you know, I can do it tomorrow. I can ask a friend to demonstrate, right? Uh, I can have other resources. I can open the online, I can uh, open the, the, the internet and, you know, uh, find semblance to it or find uh, similarities to what is being uh, given. And then from then, learn from uh from that particular uh, issue. Ang maganda pa ho dito, pag sarili po niyang inaaral, gaya, gaya sa cooking, di ba? Pag naluto po tayo ng adobo, for example, right? Uh, trial and error po tayo, di ba? Kung ka, gaano karami ang asin, gaano karami ang ilalagay mong seasoning po niya, right? And then, uh, you learn from your experience. The same through with the competency base. You have to learn Siguro uh, trial and error until such time you master the skill. And then when the time when the when you have mastered the skill, you can call the attention of your professor so you can demonstrate the way and then you earn the grade. Per se ho. So another question as AVMC Dami kung concern. In our GS comprehensive exam, we have any desk software to monitor students' PC on what they are doing. How do you manage items with mathematical solutions po, Doc? Uh, from Roxanne, Insulacion. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, I've asked our professors in, say, for example, in statistics alone, right? Uh, the definitely, uh, the definitely uh, uh, answers ang uh, kailangan doon. Um, they can use the paper, for example, right? They can use the paper and probably solve. But the answer should be reflected on online. I guess... Uh, if you can arrive at the right answer, then the, 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 the formula that, that you use or the, the method that you use is, you know, to say it's also correct. Remember in mathematics, there are different ways of arriving at the solution. There are different ways of, you, you may yield the same uh, answer, but you made the, the different methods, but they are what? They came up with the same answer. So uh, I guess that's the concept. And I believe uh, Dr. Aurelio, Dr. Kasem, and Dr. Uh, Akantilado, our resident statistician in the college, have actually uh, figured this out already because uh, during our meeting, na po, no, na mentioned na mean, uh, we will be clustering our, uh, our courses right into four. So, for example, research statistics as well as philosophy or core subjects should be uh, given as one question only. 
it's a comprehensive that encompassing all this research statistics and uh, some philosophy subject and then some major subjects and the cognitive subjects and all other uh, institutional requirement in the and the other one so um it's a Although it's a challenge for us, so we're still actually doing the examination. Anyway, matagal pa po naman, December 17. But uh, as I've said, no, um, it is challenging us. And I believe we're, uh, we're liking the challenge, right? Because it, making, it, it, it seems that it make, it's also making us uh, uh, exercise our <laughs> brain to, uh, to come up with a more uh, a cognitive examination as well as that of a challenging one that would uh, really... Uh, you know, bring out the best in our students in their comprehensive examination. Of course, in the qualifying examinations, easier because multiple choices po kasi yun, the competency exams on multiple choices. So, uh, hindi ho kami mahirapan doon. But the comprehensive exams, siguro doon ho kami na challenge. Parang, uh, siguro estudyante rin ho namin ito nagtatanong dito. Maraming ho ba kami estudyante na galing ko sa inyo? Ta? Parang tinatanong ako na ho sa administration ng graduate school. Hindi na ho na yung, hindi na ho yung uh, de-lecture ko kanina. Pero I do, uh, I do welcome it. As I've said, uh, we come up with the support to our students also. Uh, famous pa lang din sa sa MSU. Uh, sa MSU, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maraming And po pa na ayaw. Just to Maraming answer that, na, answer. Na invite na mag-aral dito. Uh, I just want to add... Scholarship ang Chen. Baka gusto ko ninyo ulit. No? Mag-send po sa amin. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay po. I just want to add uh, with regards to this question, uh, in using the any desk, um, I had to assign, because the, in laboratory, there are only 10 sets of computers and then only there are uh, na overwhelmed pa yung ano, mga students, eh, da, mar, mas marami yung mga estudyante kaysa, kaysa computers. So I, I assigned each student to that particular uh, desktop or computer with corresponding number, uh, code number. My unique number kasi yung sa any desk. And then what I did, because there is a software there in that particular computer, they can program PLC programming. They, they can do based on the task given. So, nagbibigay ako ng task para yun ang gawin nila. They, they program the, the, the task given. So, in, in making this, kung tapos na nila nila program yung task given, they have to make a file name. They have to uh, for to to easily trace or look for in the computer in their uh, respective computer assigned mas madali kong makita ma mahanap yung activity nila so they have their own uh, file folder for that particular task given so yung output nila nandiyan sa computer pa rin so when I look at my class record, because nag-gamit pa rin ako ng class record, sir, I, I recorded all the, the computers used with corresponding student, with their responding number. So, mas madali ko pag makita, pag mag-check ako sa mga activity nila, uh, I have to go, uh, go to the, that computer and look for their activity na naka-folder, then I have to check it. Uh, if the task given is uh, yung na-program ba nila correctly. Yun ang ginagawa ko sa ano, any desk na application, any desk software. Any desk software. Uh, that's actually the meaning of that one. Okay. Thank you very much for the enlightenment, sir. Kasi I thought any desk software is uh, just like in the graduate school, right? Uh, in the, uh, for example, in the computer area, you can just go somewhere anywhere. I was just literally, uh, literally uh, interpreting it. Thank you very much for the enlightenment. So, okay. <laughs> so I think there is no more question on the cloud. So thank you very much for your participation, the audience, and to our guest speaker, Dr. Nisperos. I will now give the virtual floor to the MC, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Roque. So thank you very much, Dr. Nisperos, for answering the queries of our participants, as well as to Dr. Roque, for facilitating the open forum. So 
To show our grateful appreciation to our guest speaker this morning, we shall now present the Certificate of Appreciation to our speaker. Let me read the citation first. MSU Iligan Institute of Technology, College of Education, presents this Certificate of Recognition to Dr. Paulito C. Nisperos for being the resource speaker on the topic competency-based instruction in remote teaching and learning during the webinar Technical Vocational Education in an Innovative and Flexible Modality held on November 26, 2020. Signed by Dr. Amelia T. Buwan, our Dean of the College of Education, and Dr. Socarno D. Tangol, our Chancellor of MSU IIT. Thank you very Once much. Once again, sir, Dr. Nisperos, thank you very much po for really joining us and really accepting our invitation po. Thank you po talaga. Thank you, Maraming sir. salamat din ho. Uh, at least po, nakas nakarating ho ako sa Mindanao virtually. Yes po. <laughs> Virtual lang po talaga. Pero soon, sir, we will re we would really love to um, have you here na yung face-to-face -face na po sana. Yes, ma'am. I would gladly accept any invitation coming from you. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you po. Thank you po talaga. Thank you very much. Let us also acknowledge our viewers and participants watching via YouTube Live by giving them a certificate of participation. So let me read first the citation. MSU Iligan Institute of Technology, College of Education presents this certificate of participation for having participated in the webinar Technical Vocational Education in an Innovative and Flexible Modality during the talk on competency-based instruction in remote teaching and learning held on November 26, 2020. Signed by Dr. Amelia T. Buwan, our Dean of the College of Education and Dr. Sakarna D. Tangol, our Chancellor. Thank you very much everyone for joining us. In today's webinar, we have learned a lot and these are the key points that we should remember from this session. So this session is entitled Competency-Based Instruction in Remote Teaching and Learning by Dr. Paulito Nisperos. The session started with an essential questions. We have here, how do we best support student learning when our long-standing ideas about when, where, and how learning happens no longer? And the second question was, how might we continue to prioritize mastery and personalization when, our physic when we are physically separated relying on technology to communicate. So he also have specified or have mentioned that competency-based education is a system that reimagines time, space, assessment, and other core elements of education, of education to ensure all students develop the skills they needed to succeed. So this method or CBL is tailored to meet different learning about abilities and can lead to more efficient student outcomes. So he also have presented the different myths about CBL. That CBL first is that CBL is self-based. So this is actually a myth, no? Because C CBL is personalized to the individual students, but that does not mean that students cannot collaborate. Second, CBL, uh, content doesn't matter in CBL. Again, this is a myth because both theory and practice or application should be mastered. And CBL is less rigorous than traditional education. This is still a myth because CBL is more rigorous in terms of authentic challenges and complexity of tasks, focusing on higher order thinking skills. And CBL is restrictive mode of learning, and this is a myth. CBL emphasizes on skills rather than content. However, it can inspire more varied, interesting work from both students and educators. CBL, therefore, is a system that focuses on student mastery of skills and prioritizes flexibility in the shape and timing of the assessment. Now, our speaker have also uh, presented about remote teaching. So remote teaching, of course, outside the physical classroom, which could be done in both and in an asynchronous and synchronous manner. So to prepare this, our speaker have provided different um, 
ways or methodology to prepare us for remote teaching and learning. And one of the, the, the thing that I like the most is that uh, about the, the ways or methodology that we could do to, to prepare for RTL is that we should also um, know our students' capabilities and what support is uh, there uh, available for them. So we should not just plan as a teacher, but we also have to look into our students as well. And at the same time, we also have to connect with our colleagues. So these are these are very important key points because our colleagues are also teachers who could also give us inputs and creativity on how to improve our remote and teaching uh, remote teaching and learning modality. Our speaker have also shared uh, the different um, uh, practices, good practices that the College of Graduate Studies have done. So they have started with their online environment in 2010, and the goal is for internationalization. And in 2012, they have their technology-enabled instruction. So from there, we have learned that um, competency-based can really be done online. Uh, all you have to do is to make sure that your students have uh, conducted the activity, and to verify their learning, we could also give interviews. Then they have also um, presented uh, the use of their UBL online learning management system when the pandemic started. So I, have, I am going to really read to you this, um, the last slide presented by our speaker. No, uh, This one really marks a lot for, for us, especially teachers. So it was uh, stated, however, as we embark on this journey toward embracing online learning, the school leaders and decision makers should not forget the students and families whom the current problems on equitable access and lack of enough funding may put at, at a disadvantage. Every child has the right to high quality education. Our decision to move online should not make high quality education a privilege for those students who can access the internet. As educators, our rule is to break down walls or barriers that prevent students from accessing and enjoying high quality education. So in this new normal, let, a, let us always uphold the right to high quality education by providing multiple pathways to learning that can accommodate every student. So this is a very timely, um, a beautiful quote or phrase that we have to embrace as teachers and students in the new normal, especially for teacher technology education. So we have always to remember, no, one, one of the quotes that I have um, heard from Dr. Nisperos is, to motivate ourselves, we must always find meaning in what we are doing. So really, as teachers, we have to really motivate ourselves to help our students as well. So in behalf of the, uh, the College of Education and the Department of Technology Teacher Education, we, would really, uh, we are really glad and grateful to our speaker for today, Dr. Paulito Nisperos. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. So <laughs> once again, our next webinar session will be on December 3 with the title Design Thinking in Technology Education. This will be a whole day activity from 9 a.m. to 12 noon and from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Our speaker will, will be from the a prestigious University of Thailand. We look forward to have you, our dear participants. To our dear students and participants in the field of technology teacher education, you may participate interactively via YouTube Live. And again, in behalf of the Department of Technology Teacher Education, we would like to give our deepest appreciation for, to our participants and speakers. I am Assistant Professor Vanessa Vizabala, your moderator for this session. Thank you and stay safe.